Hi, this is Sarah. And this is Rachel. And this is The Ripper Diaries, a podcast where we rip apart episode by episode of The Vampire Diaries. Warning, this is a rewatch podcast, which means spoilers always come up. They will come up this episode since there's some big changes and things happening <laughs> in this episode. Um, yeah. 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 If you couldn't tell, it's the 20s decade dance episode. Yeah. Season three, episode 20, Do Not Go Gentle. Yeah. It needs no further introduction. I know. It's... it's it's Iconic. one of my yeah, it's one of my favorite episodes in season three and probably generally. Yeah. Um yeah. it's sort of a non typical decade dance episode, but also one yeah. of the best. I in know. A way. Yeah, it's not even the decade it's supposed to be, but <laughs> yeah. it just it, it works out too still. Good. It's just too good. Um and it, starting off, you know, at the top here that I love, the episode title name. Mm. Do not go gentle is of course a reference to the poem and the title of the poem, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, which was written in nineteen fifty one by Dylan Thomas. Thomas, and he wrote it about his dying father and it was basically him trying to convince his father to fight against his imminent death oh, i did not know that it's so appropriate like yeah shockingly appropriate i love when they do titles like that that are just I like do too. surprisingly um and the last one was like that too heart of darkness um lots of alaric references lately in the title yeah definitely yeah so, i mean it's really this is all about him these days it is yeah this is a huge huge loss for the team so We'll just get into it now, yeah, I guess, before, I guess so. we, before we get there. Yeah. Um, but of course, starting off with Klaus, you know, our big bad for most of, of the season at Klaus's mansion. It's daytime. He's in the living room. He's painting this crazy abstract piece of art, painting the stress away, I guess. I, that was my first thought. I was like, what is he painting? It's just like <laughs> thick black paint. Like Yes. Oh, my God. The texture of his there. paintings yeah. are crazy. I kind of like that they've made him this like abstract artist, very like expressionist. It's fun. It is very fun. He has like a, a Jackson Pollock vibe to his like art, which is <laughs> yeah. like you kind of think he wouldn't have, but he does. But he does in a way. It yeah. works. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he's going off. He is working away that stress over everything that's been going mm-hmm. on. And Rebecca, who we now know is actually Esther, comes into the room. And Klaus asks her what took her so long. Last time we saw her, she went with Alaric to go mm-hmm. get the last steak. And she says that Alaric didn't want to hand it over. But she shows him a wooden steak and jokingly says, luckily, I'm quite the charmer. And he asks if, like, that is it. That's the steak. And she says, yeah, the last of the white oak steaks that can kill us. Do you want to do the honors or shall I? And Klaus, of course, ta- puts down his paintbrush. <laughs> yeah. And he goes over and he takes the steak from Rebecca, Esther, and throws it into the flames of the fireplace. Mm-hmm. The flames like flare up around it, eating it. And you know, you're like, okay, it's done. Oh, but good. I feel like we've brought this up before. How is there not like a system of testing these steaks? No, I know, I know. It's so I feel like it's so obvious. It's not. Yeah, it's just too easy. Which yeah. I guess for Klaus, it wasn't that easy. They had to like beat it out of a large. I guess that's true. They did spend all of last episode trying to get it, but, but still, he's just like, that's the steak. Cool. Yeah. Burnt it over yeah also doesn't he not even burn the other ones doesn't he like keep them i thought he i thought he burnt them all but maybe he did i don't remember still it's like how did you yeah. know they were white oak in the first place yeah He's it could have been like, any sure. old steak yeah they yeah. could have been faking them out the whole time for all he knows so yeah. i don't know i just thought that was crazy that he just takes it and burns it and is like it's done which not yeah. that rebecca would betray him that's what's really getting him here yeah that's i think that's the only reason he doesn't try to but check. how does he know the salvators or a lark or somebody else isn't trying to pull one over on both of them yeah so no i know it's just yeah. kind of crazy that he just burns it and he's like okay we're free oh it's we're good over. yeah cool mm-hmm. um so anyway i don't know they're just going off of vibes here basically sure um but rebecca esther is like visibly surprised because klaus immediately tells her go pack your bags we're leaving Mm -hmm. and she's like what no we can't not today (laughs) and he's like why not there's nothing keeping us here we'll grab the doppelganger and we'll be off by sunset (laughs) but very in character esther rebecca is protesting tonight's the decade dance like we can't go i'm i'm on the council i'm the chair and he's like i'm not going to some stupid dance Mm -hmm. um but she immediately says caroline will be there as we know, in Dangerous Liaisons, <laughs> Esther did her research. She yeah. Knows. I know. This scene was really making me think. I was like, Esther knows her children so well. She does. Like, from impersonating Rebecca and, like, yeah. 
fooling Klaus, who's known Rebecca for a thousand years. Yeah. And then the, yeah, the Caroline will be there. Yeah, the one thing that would get the him to go. The one thing. Um, but he claims that means nothing to me. Of course. Of, <laughs> of course, course not. Still mad about, obviously, the distraction thing that happened, like, several episodes yeah. ago at this point. But Rebecca Astor tells him, please, I have big plans for tonight. Just go for me. And so, finally, Klaus does acquiesce by saying, okay, fine. One mm. last hurrah. And she echoes, one last hurrah, Nick. It's really not even suspicious because Rebecca obviously would make no. him stay for the dance. I know. It makes so much sense. It's so perfect. Yeah. I, yeah. She just would have been more hostile about it and she wouldn't have used Caroline as a reason. She would have used That's herself. That's true. She would have just been like, aren't I, I enough for you? Yeah. I want to go. We should go. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was sad this wasn't really Rebecca. I felt like this I was know. like a good little moment for Rebecca and Klaus, but it's not even Rebecca. It's not even her. Sad. Well, like I'm saying, if it were her, it would have been more hostile. It would <laughs> not true. have went this like kind. Like. That's true. It wouldn't have had this like kind of tenderness to it. That's true. So. That's true. Anyway, also not having any tenderness really. Yeah. At the Salvatore house, Damon is talking on the phone. He's talking to Alaric, who is in this room with a gallery wall. Like yeah. he's looking out a window. That's really all we see at first. Yeah. And Damon asks him, like, where have you been? I've been calling you all day. And Alaric just says, you know, sorry, I've needed to get my head together. You know, not really giving any answers. And then Damon asks him if Rebecca got the steak from him. And Alaric just says, I don't know. I woke up alone. There's no sign of it. So, you know, probably. And Damon is like, lovely. What now? Like, <laughs> what do we do now that they have the last steak? And Alaric just says... You know, I think I need to get out of town, somewhere secluded. I keep blacking out, which means I'm still a threat to everyone. And Damon is like, I don't know if now is the like the best time for you to be going out on this spirit quest, Rick. And Alark just says, it's just for a couple of days. I'm stocked up on Bonnie's herbs. I, I'll be fine. I have to go. And then he just hangs up. Yeah. They're, and, they're too yeah. trusting of evil Lark. I know. They're just like, okay, buddy, it's you. Yeah. Yeah, because then they zoom out and we see, like, where he is. Which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's immediately the Michelson house. Of course. It's like, of, so they, of course yeah. it's evil, Lark. Yeah, come on. Because um, when he hangs up the phone and it zooms out, we see Rebecca Esther walking into the room saying, quite the cunning liar. So, like, immediately Duh. we yeah, know. Yeah, we know. It's which Lark. Which I feel like on a first watch you do sort of believe that it's a Lark. You want to believe yeah, it's a Yeah, of Lark, course. Of course. I guess is what they're all falling for as well. It's just wanting to believe it's him and that he's not as effective as True. he clearly is is by all of this um but anyway evil lark says well damon is too arrogant to think that his only friend would betray him which sad. is so sad but like we said last episode <laughs> yeah. of course evil lark can lie obviously like, of course yeah i don't know why they fell for this I don't know. but at this point like the camera's widen out enough to see the whole room which in the michelson house is full of coffins yeah. most of them empty clearly yeah. like the originals empty coffins with one like notably closed mm -hmm. and rebecca esther says like just as nick klaus was like blindly accepting an invitation from his beloved sister unaware that he's heading to his own death so both of them are like <laughs> targeting the arrogant ones to, yeah. to set their plans in motion <laughs> and rebecca slash esther dips a silver dagger into a glass bottle of white oak ash mm -hmm. you know where this is going yeah. at this point she's about to dagger herself and alaric asks did you give him the steak and she confirms yeah he burned it without hesitation mm -hmm. And Evil Lark asks, well, then where's the real one? And she tells him, you'll get it when you can no longer use it against me in this body. And she opens up the, the closed coffin, revealing Esther's actual body in it. And he asks, like, how she's going to return to her body. And she tells him, like, with a little magic and some help from a vampire hunter. <laughs> and she holds out the silver dagger to Alaric, who takes it immediately no questions no. stabs her in the heart for it <laughs> she collapses on the floor you could tell he enjoyed that too much too much he immediately absolutely like, whole body yep. into that okay you arc but anyway she falls to the floor and then like a few moments later you do see esther gasp and wake up in the coffin so yeah rebecca's down for the count daggered and esther is back in her body paired up with evil lark yeah not looking good but related to rebecca being down for the count someone has to take over the rest <laughs> of like getting the dance prep ready which of course falls to caroline yeah should have been her in the first place yeah um so at the school caroline and elena are like kind of walking around the gym as everyone's decorating like matt and jeremy are there a bunch of people are there and you know being 20s decked out it's looking good and they also i noticed they have like their hair curled and like in like yeah. i think elena has like a bun and caroline kind of has like a loose braid which i love i'm like i feel like that's so real like you're like 
I'm not gonna have time to do this after like yeah. decorating. I have to like do my hair before. You have to start doing stuff. Yeah. I know. I thought they looked so cute, but then they I noticed do. Caroline is in high heels. I was like, no, oh, girl. I didn't even notice. Where are the slides the morning of? Your yeah, come on. Online. What is she doing? But I also, I feel like Caroline's the type where she's like, I have to break these in because I have to wear them all night. That's <laughs> true. That I could see. I feel like that does make sense. I don't sense. know if they were the same ones, but I saw she was in heels for dance prep. I was like, girl, she's no, crazy. you're kidding me. She's crazy. You're gonna be on your feet all day. Yeah, she's wild for that. Um, but they look cute, so I'll forgive it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Caroline and Elena start talking, and Caroline asks, like, you know, so Alaric is trying to pull himself together. Like, why is that a bad thing? Presumably, Elena's heard that he's gonna like leave town. And Elena is like, I just wish there was something I could do. Of course, classic Elena. And then they talk about the decorations a little bit. And Caroline remarks, like, Rebecca should have been here to do this herself. And then Caroline sees Matt and Jeremy hanging up stars from the ceiling. And she's yelling direction at them, like, that they should trickle, not just be hanging there. Yeah. And Matt and Jeremy, like, look like they're having a good time. Like, they're, like, joking around. So Caroline remarks, like, look at them, all bromancy. And Elena says, yeah, I asked Matt to help Jeremy readjust. He got him his old job back at the grill. And Caroline is like, that was nice of Matt. Obviously a little implication in her yeah. voice. Caroline always. She yeah. always knows and has an implication. And then Elena just says, like, she thinks nothing of it. She's just like, Jeremy has got a lot on his mind. Everything with Alaric. You know, all of that has him really stressed out. And Caroline is like, are you sure it has nothing to do with witnessing you and Damon Getting hot and heavy in a skeevy motel. She's so funny for that. So good for that. I love her. And Elena is like, I didn't tell you that so you could torture me. But she's like smiling. They're like, yeah. they're just joking. Yeah. Best friends. Yeah, best friends. And Caroline just says, what are friends for? And then she asks Elena who she was bringing to the dance. And Elena is like, what do you mean? I thought me, you, and Bonnie were going as girl dates. <laughs> and Caroline's like, well, actually, Bonnie has a date. Jamie called and wanted her to act, like wanted her to see her, so she asked him to go. And of course, Caroline then is kind of like, "So here's a thought. Why don't you ask Stefan?" Classic Caroline. She stays yeah. obsessed. She really does. Elena. <laughs> Elena is like, I can't ask him on a date. I just made out with Damon. Like, come yeah. on. And Caroline is like, all the more reason. Yeah. <laughs> Which to her point, she's like. You're supposed to be figuring out what you want. That's what Stefan wants you to do. Like, so you should, you know, give him a chance. And she says, you know, I've watched The Bachelor. Fair is fair. It's Stefan's turn. And Elena does remark, yeah, not like you're biased or anything. We all know. Yeah, Caroline we all know. Obsessed. She's so steam- Team Stefan. It's crazy. It's crazy. She never really leaves Team, team Stefan. It no, just she becomes doesn't. for herself. Yeah. yeah. She's um, like, if she won't have him, I guess I will. I will. Someone has to. And Caroline is like, right now, she's just like, you know, I'm sorry, but Stefan is your epic love. I'm not going down without a fight. You have to ask him. And that's kind of where we leave it. So we'll yeah. see what Elena decides to do. Yeah. I love that they were going to do girl dates, though. I so know. Cute. Like, they should have. Yeah, but a three-person Jamie? girl date always falls apart. Somebody gets a date, then that Someone gives per- somebody else permission to get a date, and then yep. it just falls apart from there. But it's funny yep. that Caroline was like, I'm making it fall apart. <laughs> I know. She's like, I want this to fall apart. I mean, she yeah. was going with Tyler, so. Yeah. Well, she didn't know he was coming. He wasn't supposed to come. Oh, that's true. He does secretly kind of show up. But he's yeah. back in town, I yeah. feel like. Yeah. So. It's just funny. It is. But I hate that Bonnie's going with her sort of weird step sibling situation. I know. Situation. I'll never be over she, that. She deserves better. We'll be know. talking about this later. There's so much to be said about those there two. Is. Um, but, of course, the other date pair, of course, is Stelena. We see Stefan is at his house walking through the living room when we, like, cut to see Elena in her room at the Gilbert house calling him. And he answers with, like, a sort of confused, like, hey. Yeah. And she gives an equally awkward, like, hey like they're both just so these two they're at a weird place yeah. obviously they've been at a weird place for a while and she asks him do you have a second and he says yeah is, is everything all right mm-hmm. and elena gives such an awkward like yeah yeah um i just wanted to um um <laughs> she's just really like nah. and she like pivots she's like well caroline and i were talking about the dance and yeah. um like clearly like every avenue she's trying to do to approach this is just awkward like it's yeah. just an awkward conversation it is it so is. she finally kind of like switches into gear gives up on that and is just like okay look i know where we're at you and i and i know it would be stupid to even think that we could go back to the way that things were but i'm going to the dance and i'd like to go with you very 
sweet. Like, yeah. just really gets to the point there. And poor Stephanie looks so happy, like, I immediately. Know. He's so sweet. And he just says, I would love that. <laughs> and they're so cute. They are really cute. Because she then immediately looks really happy, too, and just says, okay, great. Bye. Bye. <laughs> just hangs up. I was thinking, I was like, no plan, nothing. That's so like, high school, though, to be I like, know. the building up to the asking is so scary. And then once you get and the I'm ask, like, you're I like, I got to hang up. Yeah. I only practiced this far. Yeah. <laughs> So well, she's saying the rest. Them. Yeah. But yeah, it's so yeah. sweet. I, like, it's so cute. And, and I'm really surprised they get this sort of cute of a scene after yeah. everything that's happened this season. True. And especially the way that this feels so strongly like a first date. Like, it's giving yeah. awkward first date vibes. It definitely is. Um, very, like, unsure, unconfident. Um, but it's really cute. And it's, like, pure. And we haven't had that from them in a long time. The whole season, basically. Yeah, honestly. So it's nice to kind of get this last... Uh, death grip out of, out of Selena yeah. before things go the way they're gonna go yeah but anyway of course right when they hang up it's not so cute because Stefan is you know standing in the Salvatore house when Damon of course walks into the room having obviously overheard everything yeah. and chooses to comment I'm thinking gardenia corsage wrist obviously you don't want to accidentally stab her in the chest with the pin now that could get messy <laughs> And Stefan just gives an awkward Damon I and Damon just walks out of the room, just like cuts him off. Like, yeah. what are you gonna say, Stefan? It's obviously there's nothing to say. There's nothing to it's, say. Yeah, it's obviously so awkward for everyone involved. And this is definitely where a lot of people's beef with Elena comes from. Of the there she's is, fully with both of them right now, which is really weird. yeah. I was gonna say this is like the only. This, like, last few episode run is, like... It's the only time she's really with both, both of them, of them. In, in this way. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like Caroline said in the last scene, like, she's trying to figure it out. And Stefan did ask her to, like, figure, figure it, it out. Figure it out, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's really awkward. Yeah, just an uncomfortable time. Yeah. But anyway, at the Mystic Falls Hospital, we see Meredith is walking down the hall. She turns around and kind of, like, looks behind her because she hears something or, you know, gets a feeling. And looks to see if anyone's following her. She's probably also on edge because she was just attempted murder oh, yeah. like a day ago. Yeah. Um, but the hall is empty. And then she turns around to go back the way she was going. And, of course, Damon is right in front of her. He Classic was, vampire. Yeah, yeah, he was doing that. And she's surprised. She's like, don't do that. That's not funny. And Damon is like, oh, come on. It's a little funny. And Meredith is having none of this. She's just like, what do you want, Damon? And he says... I need medical advice for a friend, Alaric. You remember him, right? About six foot two, tried to hack you into pieces. And Meredith asks, how is he? Like, are those herbs that Bonnie made for him working? And Damon is just like, I don't know. And then he holds up the jar of herbs and he's like, can they work if he doesn't take them? I found these in his loft untouched. Not good. Not good. Yeah. Yeah. End scene. That's it. Like, Kind of an unnecessary yeah. scene, but now we know he's. It is evil yeah, Alaric. It's, yeah, it's just this setup, I guess, to be like Damon's on to him. Like as much as Alaric thought that Damon was just going to be arrogant about it and not yeah, think yeah. anything of it, that's not true. Damon is always on to. Of things. course, no, um, I know, and he was on to this. Yeah, and also I think it shows does actually genuinely care about Alaric to be like he went and checked and like realized yeah. quickly that like something's wrong. Definitely. Um, but asking Meredith this, I mean. Yeah, it is kind of funny. I guess it's just like. He probably is avoiding Stelena because the whole dance. Thing. Yeah, he's like, I'll go talk to her anyway. He has else. no other friends, so <laughs> yeah. I guess Meredith. Um, yeah. But anyway, of course, the plan being in motion at the cemetery. Esther and Alaric are walking through the cemetery towards the big Salvatore tomb crypt situation that we're always in. And Eva Alaric asks why they're there. And she tells him that long ago on the spot, my son tore my heart from my chest and the violence of my death marked this ground for all time. And just gotta say on this exact spot the salvatore crypt i know i was thinking i was like wow that's crazy like i get it like it could be you know yeah it's a coincidence that could happen but i was like come on yeah come on it could have it would have been better if it were just another crypt but like the salvatore Salvatore crypt crypt, what a coincidence yeah interesting yeah whatever but it's cool aesthetically so i'm i'm I'm, I'm okay i'll let it go so they go into the crypt into the tomb and esther stands in front of this like ceremonial bowl where alaric is standing opposite her like facing her obviously you know we've seen these sorts of setups for a ritual Mm -hmm. for a spell before and she tells him i need your ring he obviously hesitates he's like now why would i give you the one thing that protects me from death and esther tells him 
I will give you all the protection you need. However, the stake will burn up in the body of its first victim. If you are to kill all of my children, I will need to protect I will need the protective magic of your ring for the stake, thus rendering the white oak indestructible. She's always so, like, precise with her she words. Is. It's she interesting, is. Interesting speech patterns for her. Yeah. So, Alark does finally give Esther the ring, and she drops it into the bowl. She starts chanting. You see, like, flames burst up into the bowl, and the ring starts to melt. And she takes the white oak stake that they have and uses the bottom of it to, like, stir the, Mm -hmm. like, metal and then holds it upside down by the tip and lets the metal pour down, like, in this cool web-like sort of pattern as it just sort of drips down the stake. And it, like, fuses with the white oak Mm stake, basically becomes one. And so she's holding it up by the tip, the finished stake, and she just says, the ultimate weapon. (laughs) I always repeat that. I think that's so funny. The ultimate weapon for the ultimate hunter. (laughs) I love her. (laughs) She's so funny. She is so funny. Like, how does she not laugh at herself? Is she not, like, ridiculous? The ultimate weapon. The the ultimate ultimate hunter. hunter. It's just so funny the way she says it. I feel like I've brought it up in other episodes because I just find it so funny. She, yeah. She does have such a unique way of saying everything. She does. So precise. She's Mm -hmm. very, um, I don't know, like, I want to say punctual, but that's not the right word. Yeah. Like, something like that. She's, like, punctuated. Like, everything is, like, very, yeah. Yeah, something about it. She's so funny. But anyway, the score also is so memorable. Oh, yeah. Like, that really dramatic Mm -hmm. music that builds. It's the same one they used um, when she did the linking spell with, like, the tree situation with their names. I I did mention it in that episode. I find it more memorable in this specific scene than that one. I think so, too. Um, But it works really well. I'm glad they used it twice. Yeah. It's the evil Esther score. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Also, just have to say in this scene, something I was thinking was, like, Alark really embodies the whole, like, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Like, he really does. This scene, I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, he is the villain at this yep. point. Like, it's no longer... We've seen Dark Alark and Evil yeah. Alark, but this is the cementing of, like, these acts are pretty crazy. He's becoming a villain, yeah. So, He's gonna yeah. try to die a hero, but... Yeah, we'll not see. gonna work that well. We'll see. Yes. But anyway, we have to get to the focus of this whole episode. Oh, yes. the, the most iconic part the 20s dance so we have to go to the gilbert house where elena is getting ready she's in her like pearly white flapper dress iconic outfit you already know what i'm talking about um and she's like adjusting her headband she's just like getting ready when the doorbell rings so she goes down and opens the door and of course it's stefan picking her up and he smiles at her and she says to him you look very dapper and he tells her, you look very um, beautiful. Like, he kind of pauses. Like, almost like a speechless moment. Like, yeah. Yeah. Really soaking it all up. And then he says, here, I got something for you. And then he pins a white rose onto Elena's dress, like a little corsage. Mm-hmm. And she thanks him for it. And then Stefan says, given our dangerous dance karma, are you sure you're up for this? And Elena says, getting out of bed is dangerous these days, but we have to live our lives. And Stefan is like, who gave you that horrible advice? <laughs> and Elena just says, some guy I used to date said it once or twice. This is my favorite bit of theirs. It's I know. So it's so cute. It's cute. No, it's cute. They they do really um, tee up Selena a lot in yeah. these last few episodes. They're trying as much as they can to fix it to get them on even ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And the cute is the best way for them. They're really leaning into it. Yeah, that's like their biggest strength. Just this like cute, faking normal. Like, yeah, pure. Yeah. 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 Um, so they, like, they joke about that. And then Elena just says, like, shall we? And Stefan says, please. And they they go off to the dance. Yeah. He (laughs) never thought he was going to be back to this. No, he's, yeah, he's, like, giddy. This is a Stefan we've never seen before. (laughs) Yeah. It's very cute. Again, first day vibes. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is, like, a return to season one Stefan in that way. Definitely. But, of course, going to said decade dance, the party's in full swing in the gym with lots of students, like, dancing to the music. You see mm-hmm. all the vibes, all the decorating they did yep. earlier has been put to good work. You see Bonnie <laughs> and Jamie are dancing. Yeah. They're there. Um, and Caroline is there, and she walks right up to Matt, who's, like, restocking the drinks <laughs> table with ice. So it's like, of course, Manny on the job. Um, As always. Which, first of all, I have to say about Matt. He said that the 20s would be cooler than the 70s because, like, bell bottoms and stuff. And then he chose to show up in that hat. Oh, my. Like, he's so funny to me. He's wild. <laughs> but anyway, Yeah. Mostly he looks good. Most of them. They all look good. They all look good. 
But anyway, Caroline asks him, have I told you how amazingly awesome you are? And Matt, with his usual charm, responds, yeah, I'm one of the good ones, I know. <laughs> Matt, shut up. He's so funny for that, He's, though. He is funny for that, but like... It's just I don't so know. cheesy. <laughs> and he says, why the compliments? What else do you want? And Caroline asks, I know that you and Elena have been getting closer mm-hmm. lately and just kind of like trails off. Mm-hmm. And he asks, and your point is? And Caroline says, one way or the other, she's pretty much spoken yeah. for. And Matt tells her, Elena is my friend, Caroline. I'm just looking out for her. But she tells him, I'm just looking out for you. Because sometimes yeah. the people who love her get caught in, get caught in the crossfire. Mm-hmm. This conversation is so interesting to me. So crazy. Like, yeah, I suppose like it's just to serve as like set up for him in the finale for what he's going to do for Elena. That's like yeah. my one impression of probably why they're doing this. Because otherwise I'm like, I feel like Matt has accepted. Yeah, we're so far past this. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think he's kind of I mean, he probably he has said, you know, that he will always love her and would of probably course. take an opportunity to get back with her. Well, yeah, probably. But but it does feel like overall he's accepted that they are this yeah. platonic love. Who, Definitely. You know, they grew up together. They'll always be best friends. Yeah. They'll always be there for each other. So I'm like, I feel like it's kind of weird to rehash this like Matt's obsessed with Elena plot. Doesn't feel necessary for me. No, other I feel the same. than to set up the finale. Yeah, I think I think that's more of what it is. I do think they've been trying really hard to like hammer home the Matt Elena friendship. Hundred percent. Yeah. So I think to even make it like this, it could be bordering on like love. It's like yeah, you know, you have They're to kind of more weight to it either. Yeah, way. yeah. But and again, I do think like him showing that he's moved on. I do feel like does help that in the end that it's like that's true, true. they really are Platonic just true friends, friends. they've yeah. they've come back from like you know having dated and everything they really are just like yeah, this just truly unbreakable friendship other. yeah yeah that's true so it works but yeah i it agree it's like interesting approach interesting way to do it but but it works that it's yeah. caroline doing it because it's just so caroline it's so style. caroline i know that's why i didn't think too much of it i was like caroline's just always injecting herself everywhere yeah if I'm it like, were okay. Bonnie, it would be different. It'd be, I think. Yeah, it'd it be wouldn't like, work for what? me. But yeah. but Caroline, it's like Caroline just kind of thinks of everything. Yeah, she's so just always fine. inserting herself. But anyway, at the end of this conversation, Matt spots Tyler across the gym just greeting people. He's like shaking no, people's not, face. He's like, I was gonna say not just greeting. He's dapping people up. He's like, hey, how the hell are you? Like he's the man of the hour. He is literally like owning that gym right now i was gonna say we know he's been missing for however long he's just like left town i was gonna say he's been like uh, like without reason away for like yeah. weeks so i guess it does yeah. make sense and he was like but the like, quarterback right? yeah everyone was yeah small. yeah but, but it is just it's so just funny the way the song that's playing i was like i love this moment it's i know so funny to it me. was really funny but anyway so they laugh. spot tyler and matt's like what's he doing here <laughs> Because obviously the reason he's been gone is to hide from Klaus, and now he's just at the school dance. And Caroline turns and sees Tyler, and obviously shocked and is upset by this. Yeah. She marches right over to him and is like, are you crazy? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, if Klaus sees you, and Tyler responds, what's he <laughs> I was gonna say the pre laugh because it's so funny. Caroline asks if Klaus sees you, and Tyler cuts her off. What's he gonna do? Draw you another picture? <laughs> He ate with that he line. Ate, he it's ate. so funny. He left that one crumb. Yeah. I was like, all right, I love Tyler. <laughs> like, cause, I don't know, maybe he'll snap your neck, Tyler. But yes, he also, the real problem here is that he probably will draw Caroline That's, another That picture. would be his real response. So the it's teenage funny. boy motivation is coming in so strong in, this, in Tyler's whole vibe this episode. I, yeah, um, it really is. It's so funny, but not to Caroline, who immediately is like, Tyler, this isn't a this joke. This is serious, yeah. And he tells her... I can pretend I'm sorry if I have to, but I am not going to hide while he's macking all over you. <laughs> what does he think is going on? It's just so funny. I have no idea. He's so ridiculous. He's but so I love him. Also, it's kind of fair to be like, if he's hitting on you and you don't want him hitting on you, yeah. I feel like I need to be here. That's fair. Um, But that's not even necessarily the way he's posing no, it. No, not really. So what Caroline claims next is, Tyler, you don't need to be jealous of Klaus. And he says, I am jealous, but I'm also competitive. <laughs> so again, it's I think it's more so about yeah. trying to beat Klaus in this. Caroline's just become is. the new toy in between them to fight over. Yeah, I know. I was thinking. Which I don't love. It's kind of, it's like the same thing with almost Stefan turning his humanity back on. He had to fix it on hating Klaus. Yeah. Tyler definitely has that whole arc that even bleeds into one of the spinoffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where it's like, he, Tyler's just obsessed with hating Klaus at this point. 100%. Like it's, it's done a 180. Yeah, from this point on, 
Tyler's whole thing yeah. is just Klaus. Yeah, it's barely even about Caroline at this point. Yeah. So, yes. So he's all in on winning over Caroline now to yeah. spite Klaus. And so he says, so hang on. I'm about to sweep you <laughs> off your feet. And he scoops her up and spins her around. And she's, like, squealing, like, happy, obviously. Yeah, but it's just cute, like, but... yeah, the vibes are great. It's really nice. But it's also just like, oh, Tyler. <laughs> he's wild. He's so funny. So, also, if I saw someone sweeping someone off their feet at a high dance. school dance. I would be like, put her down. Yeah. It's not that serious. Stop that. Stop. <laughs> Get out of here. That's a write up. Yeah. I don't think so. But everyone else is enjoying their time because right after that, we get like a montage of everyone dancing. Yeah. yeah all the yeah. 20s decorations and the vibe. It's just so fun. Yeah. And then we see Stelina walk in. Yeah. Yeah. I, it does look like, you know, really well put together, really beautiful. And of course, Stelina walk in. They look beautiful. Yeah. They really complete the vibe. They do. Yeah. It does really feel like they're like putting a bow on it. And Elena asks Stefan to teach her some moves. And of course, in classic Stefan fashion, Stefan is like, no, no. Of course, <laughs> yeah. he doesn't want to dance. Why did they make it so that he hates dancing, Damon loves dancing, and Elena clearly likes dancing too? I'm like, I'm like they again, never wanted them to be yeah, endgame. But this is what I'm saying. Yeah. And he, he does say, you know, his excuse is, I blacked out for most of this decade, remember? Yeah. Which, first of all, yeah, why did they make the dance 20s in the first place so triggering for poor Stefan? That's what I was thinking. I was like, it makes sense, like, that Rebecca would want that. It was the last time she was alive. Yeah. Like, also of course, it's a vibe. she's nostalgic for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good bow on, like, the season as a whole. We yes. started with the 20s episode now in we're episode ending. three, and now yeah. we're ending. But still. But still traumatizing <laughs> for poor Stefan. How he's not having flashbacks all night. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But anyway, Elena tells him, you know, nice try. They're joking around. And she kind of grabs Stefan's hand and drags him out to the dance floor. And they start dancing to, like, you know, a fast ish song. Like, just like a regular. Yeah, a little jazzy. Yeah, like a jazzy. Yeah. But then, of course. Of course. A slow song comes on. So they start slow dancing. We're having one of the classic Selena dance moments. And Stefan sees Bonnie dancing with Jamie to this slower song. And Bonnie looks happy, you know, like, you know, she looks like she's having a good time. And Stefan comments on that. He's like, you know, he comments that she looks happy. And Elena says that she's working on it. And Stefan kind of at this point is like, I've been meaning to talk to Bonnie, like to apologize. And Elena tells him that he should, although, you know, I wouldn't expect her to forgive you or Damon. And with the mention of Damon, she, like, immediately breaks from the dance. She, yeah, like, it's such a reminder. Yeah, it's reality. a reminder. Yeah, she, like, lets go. Kind of, like, steps back a little bit and is, like, Stefan, listen, like, about Damon. We should probably talk about the trip to Denver. And Stefan just says, I don't need to know, Elena. When all this is over, if you and I find our way back to each other, you can tell me if you want to. Otherwise, I don't need to know and I don't want to know. And they just go into dancing again. And Elena asks him, like, how he can be so fair about all of this stuff. Because this is a very level-headed Stefan. Yeah. Especially compared to, like, you know, five episodes ago where yeah. he was being insane, trying to kill her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and Stefan just says, you know, kind of calling back to that, after everything I've put you through, I'm just honored to be your date tonight. Yeah. And, like, just doesn't even care about the David of it all. And Stefan dips Elena, and they do a dance. does the underarm twirl and everything. And, of course, as they're having their moment, right on cue, Damon shows up and is like, we three need to talk. Obviously, this herb Alaric situation, not looking good. So Damon, Elena, and Stefan walk out of the gym to, like, go talk. And Jeremy sees them and starts to follow them, not looking at all where he's going, because he literally bumps into, like, walks right into Bonnie and Jamie, who are dancing. And he's like, oh, uh, hey, sorry, Bonnie. Like, <laughs> like, okay, Jeremy. And Bonnie immediately is just like, wait, why are you still wearing your ring? Which, yeah. wild that she just clocked that. But, you know, and she asks, like, didn't Elena tell you? Like, everything going on with the Laric. And Jeremy is just like, yeah, I know all about it. But when my sister stops hanging out with vampires, I'll take it off. And then Jeremy just goes to find Elena, Damon, and Stefan in the hallway. And Jamie is like, ex-boyfriend. And Bonnie's just like, yep. <laughs> Jamie's like, oh, that's not awkward at all. It's so awkward. Why did they make yeah, Jeremy what? run into Bonnie? What was the point there? I have no idea. I thought that too. I was like, this is a weird... Maybe just establish that he knows about Alaric is my only guess. Because like the last episode, they didn't 
tell him anything about a lark necessarily he'd been out of the loop but yeah still it's like i feel like it's inferred that he was he would be told about everything so it's not definitely like, i mean a lark is just about to like you know like disappear for a few days is what he's yeah. been telling them so like yeah yeah of course he would say something did, i don't know did they do the heart stop episode is that the next episode i can't remember it must be happens. right because they or is it the finale I haven't no, watched. I, like, I know I'm like I haven't watched ahead, so I'm. I don't remember, but I'm either. Like, maybe it's something to do with that. They're trying to reestablish the Bonnie Jeremy vibes. I think they are because I think it's the next episode. It's like yeah, soon. It it's is either soon. way. It's like one of the next two. So yeah, I think it's the next one. So maybe it's to do with that too, where they're trying to kind of establish yeah. the vibes there that they're still weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, speaking of weird vibes, yeah. um, out in the hallway, Damon, Alina, and Stefan have gone, you know, away to talk separately. And we come into, like, the middle of the scene, basically, of, like, Alina is saying, if Alaric is sick, then we need to find a cure, something. Mm-hmm. But Damon says, we tried medicine, we tried magic, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> and Stefan asks... Well, why don't we get him off for vain, try to compel him? But Damon pushes back. What? To pretend to be a lark? The guy that we know is gone. Yeah. We're talking about someone who not only hates vampires, but vampire sympathizers, which makes one of his most obvious targets, I don't know, you, gesturing to yeah. Elena, who looks really surprised. Um, I think this is interesting that they brought us up this compelling like theory. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of surprised they don't try it just for the sake of it. But I guess at this point, it's not like you could like you said, compel him to just be the normal Alaric. I think you could only compel him to, like, yeah. not kill people. Which, even, even then, then, Bill, like, resisted compulsion. I feel like at this point, evil yeah. Alaric could, too. So, I kind of feel I like that, know. too. I also feel like, yeah, he might just be so far beyond that. Like, not even, like, he can resist it. It almost feels like, yeah, yeah there which are Which, especially with Esther on his side. Yeah, which they don't exactly. know yet, but... I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. It is like a bit. They should have tried it a little sooner, maybe. <laughs> yeah. They should try it when they first found out, like, stop killing people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't attack us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. anyway, um, so he's obsessed now with the fact, not mm-hmm. even about a lark, but that a lark was probably going to go after Elena. And Stefan asks, like, you think he's going to go after Elena? And Elena's like, so wait, like, what are you even suggesting we do here? And Damon very bleakly responds, I'm suggesting that we put him out of his misery. Elena is obviously taken aback by that, asking yeah. what? And of course, at this moment, Jeremy has just come around the corner, was listening in, and mm-hmm. chooses now to jump into the conversation saying, no, no way in hell. He's pissed. Yeah. But Damon continues, come on. It's what he would want. It's a mercy killing. But J- Jeremy, like, keeps raging on, though, saying, you're out of your mind. And Elena's, yeah. like, saying his name, trying to calm him down. But Jeremy turns around and, like, storms off, just leaving. Obviously, he, like, can't handle this. The kid is, like, 16. Like, I know. Like, that's so the reminder He's the here. last person they have. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. It's so fair for him to react like this. But it definitely is. Elena follows after him, follows him all the way outside of the dance to where they're, like, literally outside like, yeah. the entrance. And... They always are saying about how they shouldn't split off and whatever. And then they always are splitting they off. They always split off. Almost always Jeremy's fault. He did it at the yeah. 50s or 60s dance, one of them. Actually, both of them. Both he was of an them. issue. I was yeah. going to say, it's always Jeremy. It's always Jeremy at the decade dances. Yeah. Being like, I Lock can go off in his bedroom own. at the next dance. Come He's on. not allowed to go. No. <laughs> but um. anyway, Elena calls out to him and he finally stops and turns around towards her. And he says, this is a lark we're talking about. He looked out for us and now we need to do the same for him. Mm-hmm. And Elena tells him, like, no one's going to hurt him. Like, obviously, Elena's not down for the plan of just putting him out of his yeah, misery. Yeah, clearly not. No. Yeah. So Jeremy turns back around, starting to walk away. But Elena grabs his arm and stops him. And she consoles him, saying, like, hey, look at me. I promise. Why she's promising something she obviously has no power no over. No control over, but okay. Don't know. But suddenly, you hear Elena's name get called out. And she turns and sees it's Esther. And Esther tells her, if you wish to help your friend Alaric, I suggest you come with me. Again, her dialogue's so funny to me. Yeah. And Elena just immediately instructs Jeremy, go inside and get game- Damon and Stefan now. now. <laughs> he turns and books it yeah, inside. He, he doesn't just, even care. He's like, bye. Yeah, he runs. Yeah. Why? Which, why would he leave her alone? I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, Jeremy, again, he's always the problem. Like, yeah. why would you? But it's almost out of character because I feel like usually Jeremy's the one who's like, no, I'm I'll gonna stand fight. Up. Yeah, yeah, like I'm not running. Literally later this episode, he's like going to square off. Yeah, like, so it's kind of weird. He turns and yeah. runs at this, but anyway, I guess he just assumes Elena's gonna talk to her and he can go get yeah. Stephen and Damon while it's happening. But 
shockingly, Elena's just like, okay. Yeah, bye. Because <laughs> Esther tells Elena, like, I mean you no harm, but willingly or not, you will come with me. So Elena just follows her. <laughs> Girl, you couldn't have stalled. Give 30 yeah. seconds. They come out Jeremy like two it. seconds. Yeah, you yeah. literally see the next second they're walking outside. It must have taken them max like a minute tops because yeah. Jeremy was running and I'm sure they were running too. Yeah. Just be like, where are you taking me? What's happening? Slow her down a little. Yeah. But instead Elena's just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> just follows her out Fine. into the woods. <laughs> so yeah, BFFR again for Elena because yeah. – not to attempt to stall there. No. Nope. Because, yes, as we said, literally a moment later, Damon and Stefan and Jeremy are hauling it out of the school. Yeah. Trying to find her. When suddenly, Stefan and Damon stop. As we've heard with the sounds before, mm-hmm. they hit an imaginary, v- invisible, I guess, force field. While Jeremy just continues on, like, walking past the school until he realizes that they're not following him. And mm-hmm. he stops and turns around. And they finally cut to a wide shot. And you see huge line of salt around the entire school <laughs> and esther with her vat of salt again i was like she's so crazy for this this is so funny this is an insane amount of salt like, <laughs> like literally vats vats yeah. <laughs> where is she getting even this the i don't know that does not have this much even the snow patrol people who no. have to ice the roads do not have this much like where is she getting this all from also no one saw it until now like yeah it's really just crazy they, she must have gotten someone to do it during the dance yeah because they, they had to already be there arrived but anyway, Stefan fills in for the viewers, yeah. who if you didn't know this was Saul, he does say salt. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and he says it's the binding agent for the spell. Yeah. And Damon completes it with the, we're trapped here. Yep. Obviously. Of so course. she's spelled them in and they can't go anywhere. So yep. every um, vampire currently at the dance is stuck. Yeah. And of course, still inside of the dance, trying to have a moment before it all gets ruined by this little salt situation. Bonnie and Jamie are off in one of the classrooms alone together Ooh, yeah. yeah and you know bonnie is like you had all kinds of moves out there and jamie says you know he was trying to make a good impression and bonnie says consider me impressed and then jamie kind of says you know your friends seem pretty cool to which bonnie is like yeah they're the most important thing in the world to me which i was like yes yeah, so oh, i love, love you establish that i know i love that we just had to, if you didn't know it already we got bonnie's confirmation that yeah she's a ride or die and jamie then is just kind of like but you have to admit though this whole circle of people is wild like vampires werewolves like ex-boyfriends with magic rings and then there's me just a normal guy and bonnie says a normal guy wouldn't have said yes to a date with me and Jamie is just like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was like, what does he mean? I was like, yeah, I was like, he's special too. Yeah. <laughs> that's the vibe they're giving. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like they really narr- like nailed the teenage dialogue because that's I'm like, true. that's definitely a thing you say like when you're like 17, 18, you're like, I have so much riz, but like, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, it's not that. Yeah. it's not that cute. It's not that cute. But anyway, and Bonnie obviously thinks it's cute, which is fair. And she kisses him and kind of, like, you know, pulls back. And they look at each other. And then they start to kiss again. And they're, like, making out. When, again, on cue, ruining the moment, yeah. Damon enters, flips on the light switch, and is like, sorry to spoil your seven minutes in heaven, but we have a problem. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Like, Bonnie's always getting thrown in. Yeah. Yeah. But can't even hate him for ending it because the scene, unfortunately, for me, just so, falls so flat. I know. Like, they have no chemistry. Like They have no chemistry. They've been missing and barely in the plot for so long. We I haven't know. seen them really together enough to care that much. No. Not really. Especially for how little chemistry they have. It's just unfortunate. It's just all I know. unfortunate. I know. I feel like they needed... I just... Sorry to Jamie, but they just needed someone with like better chemistry with Cat. I yeah, feel. they did, which is crazy because we've said this before. Cat has really great chemistry she with does. a lot of people. She really does. So I don't know why it was such a problem they this time. They just thrown in Jeremy, get them back together, like yeah. whatever. Yeah, even I feel Jeremy like they have more chemistry. chemistry. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But, but I also, just, I was thinking, yeah. I love this lip color on her. Didn't look as good as Jamie, though. No. <laughs> she was covered in it by the end of the scene. I was like, because I really was thinking, I was like, I love her lip color. And then suddenly was, yeah. it's all over his face. I was That's like, good. so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Bonnie's whole look is great. We'll get to those at the end. Though. Yes. Yeah. We'll, cover we'll all do a full, looks, a full debrief. Yeah. Um, but yes, of course, going into the seriousness of this episode yes. at the cemetery now, Elena and Esther are walking towards the Salvatore tomb. And Esther tells her, you'll forgive me for taking you from the dance this evening. That's the 
burden of being the doppelganger, I'm afraid. Your blood is a potent binding agent for a witch's spell. And Elena's just like, just please don't hurt Alaric. Yeah. When Alaric appears from the shadows and he says, she's not hurting me. Uh. Elena's obviously so relieved to see him and she yells out his name and she starts to run toward him, but then kind of stops and slows down. Obviously, poor Elena is immediately realizing that's not a lark. That is not a lark. He's something's different vibe mm-hmm. wise. Like that's not him anymore. Nope. And Elena just turns and asks Esther, "What's going on? What are you doing with him?" And Esther tells her, "I'm going to remake him." And Elena asks, "Remake him?" And Esther tells her, "Make him strong, fast, like my children, indestructible. For one final time, I'm going to tap in the dark magic that I used a thousand years ago. Like my husband Michael before him, I will make Alaric into a true hunter, a vampire to end all vampires." And Elena tells her, you can't create another original. What if he turns out to be an even bigger monster than your children? But Esther is sure. She says he won't. Now that he has embraced his darkest aspect, his hatred for them will become more pure and uncompromising. In death, that hatred will be magnified. She's crazy. Oh, good. Oh, good. She's so crazy. She is really crazy. Which Elena is like, you don't know that. You don't know anything about him. But Esther reveals that is where you're wrong. Each time he died with that ring during his brief journey into death, I was there on the other side. I spoke to him. I nurtured him, knowing that every death brought him closer to his true self. Vampires took everything from him. Now he's getting his vengeance. Esther is crazy. She is crazy. He literally... She's, she's so crazy. crazy in general and i don't know why she has this logic too because i feel like it's very fair to think like once he kills all the originals all vampires are dead what's he gonna do he's just hanging out yeah like he's not gonna go back to teaching his history class and being all good and happy he's still this weird dark alaric yeah it doesn't I mean, seem he's just then gonna go kill serial killers or something which again you know the morality of that is yeah i don't know but i don't know it really is just like insane logic from her it's really crazy but also i said a few episodes ago i believe in 1912 because that's when it would make sense so a Alest- or a lester a lester <laughs> <laughs> esther. esther esther reveals she was the one making evil alaric like kind of more evil like almost like yeah. getting in his head pushing him in that way coaxing him was she doing that to samantha gilbert i know that makes the, no weird, the logic of this isn't i do think that the dying brings you closer to like a darkness i think that's fair but then but, with Alaric specifically, I guess she was curating it more. I guess. But it also feels like Samantha Gilbert was like the same type of like crazy because she was also killing council members. Yeah. And like vampire sympathizers, like people who weren't doing enough. Like, yeah. Which I, I don't, don't know. know. It could stand for her that maybe she was just killing people. That's just who she was around. You know, I guess I that's know. true. Kind of more of like a coincidental thing. But yeah, I don't know. I thought this reveal that like Esther was coaxing. It doesn't Alaric. make sense with Samantha and the equation. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah. The only thing I was thinking is maybe they wanted to like give a reason why Jeremy is still normal. Because I feel like yeah. that works. But yeah, with Samantha in the equation, I'm like, it's weird. I don't really follow. But it's weird. I guess she could have been coaxing Samantha, too. Just, like... Yeah. You know, she was just hedging her bets. She was like, I gotta get one yeah. of these people to yeah. be, like... almost like she's trying to create, like, a new line of hunters. Like, yeah. Like, hunter's mark situation. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But, don't yeah, know. I thought this was really... I don't know. Yeah. A little... It's interesting. But yeah. I do like, theoretically, that she is coaching him on the other side. It, it like, pulls too. a nice bow on the idea that there was like a grander plot to all of this yes, you know yes. like and that she was like you know secretly pulling the strings in the background i like that aspect. i do too i also really like that i feel like it keeps alaric still like it kind of like alleviates him of some of the responsibility for yes, this so it's he like was it makes him redeemable evil. yes 100 yeah. percent. the regular alaric kind of stays like pure in your mind mm-hmm. of being just somebody who's taken advantage of yeah him. yeah definitely so, so i think it works I'm sure they knew they were like gonna. (laughs) This is where our spoilers, spoiler warning comes in. I'm sure they knew they were gonna like bring him back eventually. I feel like yeah. Well, he was. Well, I will say he was getting written off because he got another TV show. So it was definitely a and it was on the CW. Mm. So it probably was with the thought of like we could bring him back. He could come back like a Ghost World situation. Yeah, Ghost World situation. If his other show ends, which did obviously, they could write him back in. 
Um, but yeah, for all intents and purposes, they were writing him off because he got another show. So mm. the actor was leaving. Yeah. But interesting. They yeah. still made him redeemable. They but, did. Yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah. But anyway, back at the dance. Back inside. We gotta, we gotta go back to the dance real quick. Back in the gym, Caroline and Tyler are slow dancing, and Tyler is looking around, you know, just whatever, because they're, like, moving around. And then suddenly, he kind of stares off in one direction, is kind of, like, surprised. And Caroline is like, what is it? And then we see Klaus approaching, saying, where have you been, mate? Yeah. Yeah. He looks incredible. I love this look for Klaus. I feel like I know the white suit. Yeah, it, it really, stands out. It blows everyone else out of the water yeah, too, it like does. all the other men for sure. Yeah. And Tyler says to Klaus that he just got back into town, and Klaus says, "That's funny. I don't recall giving you permission to leave in the first place. You don't mind if I cut in, do you?" And Caroline is like, "Yes, of course. Like, actually, we do care if you cut in." <laughs> But Tyler, of course, is trying to keep up this ruse that he's not still sired. And it's also, I think, a little ambiguous if he is or isn't. Yeah. Um, Because he said he's like, he doesn't know. We haven't seen him test it at this point. Exactly. So he has to play along either way. Either way, he's playing along with this. Yeah. Um, And Tyler just is like, it's fine. Like, go ahead. And Caroline is like, why? Like, to Klaus, why do you always have to prove you're the alpha male? And Klaus says... I don't have to prove anything, love. I am the alpha male. I love him. I do love him, too. I know. I was seeing this whole scene. I was like, how could you see Tyler in that dumbass hat and then look at Klaus and still somehow be like, I'm choosing Tyler? Yeah, but he's giving so evil this episode. He's giving evil. The showing up and kicking him out and being like, I am the alpha male. Yeah. Like, he's being the worst, but. He is being the worst. Also, the I am the alpha male does border on an egg, but I'm like, yeah. for Klaus, he it's can do it. It's so funny. It is funny. Um, and he says to Caroline, come on, like one dance, I don't bite. And so Caroline kind of looks at Tyler and like hesitatingly like takes Klaus's hand and they go into a dance. And Klaus says to her as they're dancing, you would have loved the 1920s, Caroline. The girls were reckless, sexy, fun. They literally used to dance until they dropped. And Caroline says, I don't suppose that ever happened to their dance partners. And Klaus just says, you should be nicer to me. I'm leaving town tomorrow. I'd invite you to come with me, but we both know you're not ready to accept my offer. Perhaps one day in a year or even in a century, you'll turn up at my door and let me show you what the world has to offer. Oh, I was like, (laughs) he is literally saying he'd wait a century for her. I know. Like, come on. And I I will say, like, she does look like this conversation is affecting her. Like, okay, he's hitting I a nerve. Too. As soon as he said that he was leaving town, she Yeah, made a she's face. like, oh. Like, um, she's definitely taken aback. And it should be relieved because it means her and Tyler will be free. But I did not read her no. face. It's just like, oh, thank God he's no. leaving town. It was Mm-mm. kind of like a shocked, like, already? Like, yeah. It's so interesting. And she does look affected. I would be affected. I would be affected. I'm I affected, affected as a viewer. <laughs> I was going to say, I am. Especially because it feels so, like, prophetic is that the right word because yeah. it does happen yes where like she shows up on his doorstep in season what seven or something yeah like, at the end, like looking for help but still i'm like it really is very interesting that it no comes i true. know so it's so good i also kind of love that it feels almost like a through line too because of like the is. voicemail he leaves her to yes. of like I w- like you know when they go off on the original spinoff they're like i want to show you this like yeah they have such a through line of like seeing the world and travel yes. and being bigger than like this one town and yeah they're the only people that are like that everyone else is so small town which is fine and valid and i'm glad small town people have their rep but i think a lot of people find the idea of being like traveling the world and yeah. seeing the world with a partner as being so romantic so yes I just absolutely love, i love it i know i i love every vibe they bring and you know he kind of like stares into her eyes as he gives her this whole big speech but she looks away and klaus says you mark my words a small town boy a small town life it will not be enough for you and then he just kind of leaves her and she kind of watches him go for a second. We only get a little second because we see him storming out. <laughs> Klaus is on the phone as he's like walking out of the out of the gym, out of the high school entirely to the outside. And he's saying into the phone, Rebecca, call me back immediately. I only came to this ridiculous dance because you begged me to. And now you're nowhere to be found. 
he wasn't so preoccupied with the Caroline of it all, he would know something was up, but that's okay. And he walks out and then he sees the salt line and he stops and he says out loud, what is this? And Stefan walks up behind him and is like, your mother's back. Oh. Poor Klaus having the worst night of his life. Yeah. All because of his mom. <laughs> yeah. Truly. Truly. Yeah. But yeah, I love Klaus. I love Caroline. I know. This is such a great scene. I'm so glad they injected this I in do, here. I do. Yeah. Um, it's perfect. Again, this is where I'm just like, how did they not know Caroline was like going to really affect people? I know. Like, I kind of see that last line, the like, mark my words. It's like, it's it a is, little, like it's menacing. A little, it's a little menacing. It's a little annoying. It's a little like, okay, Klaus. Even though I do think the point of it really stands yeah. and i really like yeah um but he delivers it obviously in an angry way that's not fair and whatever so yeah. i don't know it's really interesting and again maybe it is on joseph and, and candace the way they're playing it um mm-hmm. and they just naturally have too much chemistry i guess but, but yeah oh man they just work so well they work me. so well i know but we of course them <laughs> yeah could talk about them yeah. endlessly but of course we have to fix the problem of getting them out of the school yes we see like it cuts to in like a classroom several candles are lit bonnie is chanting Damon, Stefan, Klaus, Jamie, and Jeremy are all there watching. Got the whole crew. And Jamie's like, she does this all the time, right? Like, <laughs> this guy's got no idea what's going on. The fact that Jamie is in a room with Klaus is just so funny. Wild. <laughs> yeah, I did not think he'd be there, but okay. Yeah. Klaus, meanwhile, is pissed. He is watching mm-hmm. every little move Bonnie is making. He is yep. angry, and he, like, bursts out, what's taking so long? All boundary spells have a loophole. Mm-hmm. He's not having any of this. And Matt comes in and is like, People are walking right out of the dance past the barrier. Yeah. And Jeremy says, well, Matt and I can leave. We can stop Esther ourselves. We just got to find out where she is. And Stefan stops them saying, it's suicide, Jeremy. And Klaus rushes over and grabs <laughs> Jamie by the, sh- the throat, starts like strangling him. And he threatens, <laughs> suicide would be disappointing me. Now work your magic witch or I'll start killing people you fancy. And Bonnie yells at Klaus to let him go. And Klaus is like, not until you get us out of here. Stefan, of course, ever the hero has to step in and is like, don't be stupid, Klaus. Bonnie doesn't give a damn about us. The only reason she's helping us right now is to save Caroline Mm -hmm. and Tyler. You start killing the people she cares about, she'll tell us all to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And Klaus finally lets go of Jamie, who... Poor Jamie immediately had to become the hostage. In I this know. It's like he didn't even know what he was signing up for. No, this I is why feel like Bonnie can't have a date ever. No, not good. No, and I do think this works to kind of like get J- Jamie eventually out of the story. It's like yeah, he it doesn't does. belong in this world. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous for him. Even though that's such a sad plot for Bonnie. I know. Yeah, I know. It is I know. Realistic. It's another reason to hate this little like sub romance plot. Like. Yeah. Ugh, At it least can't like, end with well. Jeremy, he's already built into it. There's no yes. getting out of it. Yes. Because he's part of it. Um, it's kind of the reality that they all face. It's like you can never bring someone into this. They have to yeah. already be a part of it. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. But anyway, back at the Esther Elena situation in the crypt, Esther is lighting candles, like clearly getting things ready. We know a spell is about to go down. And Elena tries to like, you know, Esther can obviously hear them, but she's trying to like almost whisper to Alaric and like get like really talk to him and say like, Rick, this isn't what you want. It's not who you are. And Alaric tells her, you don't know who I am, Elena. You only know the weakest parts of me. The man who lost his way befriending vampires instead of killing them. And Elena tries to say, you don't mean that. But Alaric just says, they're all monsters. The blood of their victims is on my hands. Jenna's blood is on my hands. And at this point, Esther is just like, when you're ready, like cutting all this off. And Elena tries one last time to reason with Alaric, telling him, no, come on. And then she says to Esther, I won't help you. I'm not going to give you my blood. You're going to have to kill me. And Esther is just like, that won't be necessary in her her way. Yeah. And Esther kind of like makes a gesture toward Elena, who immediately starts clutching her hand to her chest. And it almost, I feel like it sounded like you could hear like her heart beating or something. Yeah. And then she pulls her hand away and we see a cut forming and opening up and start like dribbling blood. Yeah. And Esther then just like grabs Elena's wrist and like pulls it over to a huge bowl that she had. And the blood, of course, goes in. Yeah. 
And then, yeah. Elaine is so sweet for just thinking that she had any choice. In I know. She's so innocent still. Like, she's just like, I won't do it. Yeah, <laughs> I won't help you. I guess because the last time it went down, she was, like, willing. Yeah, Like, that's when they did true. the family tree. But, but no but... longer at that point. Yeah, come And on. also, even that point, I think Esther was still going to cut she her open. She still was going to do that. Yeah. For sure. So, um, whatever. But, yes, <laughs> she is innocent, I guess. Um, so, now that the blood, the doppelganger blood is in there, Esther tells Alaric to drink and let it be done. And Elena again is like, no, Rick, please don't do it. And Alaric just takes this huge bowl. I don't know why this wasn't in like a chalice. He takes a whole bowl that covers his face <laughs> yeah. and like drinks from it, I guess. And then puts it down and he asks, is it finished? And Esther says, not just yet. And then she stakes Alaric with the white oak steak. And Elena yells out, no, like it's done. Yeah, it's He's done. We know where this is going. Michael We've was a vampire, a vampire, vampire hunter. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. We know what's going to go down. Yeah. So back to the school where they're still trying to just even get caught up with what's going on. Yeah. Um, alone in a classroom, we see Bonnie who grabs a map off of a wall and puts it on the desk and is like turning the lamp towards it, observing it as Klaus mm-hmm. and Damon walk in. And Damon gives Bonnie Jeremy's blood and says, you know, that's for a locator spell to find Elena. And Bonnie asks, I have to do this with you two lurking over mm-hmm. me? And Damon says, you're still mad at me for what happened with Abby. Let me apologize. I'm sorry Elijah forced us to turn your mother into a vampire to save Elena's life. Didn't exactly have a choice. And, of course, Bonnie angrily responds to that. There's always a choice. Whenever you make one, someone else suffers. Okay, but what was the choice? What was the choice? I don't know. I think... It's hard because I do agree with Bonnie in a way because it is. I know it's a huge pattern for Damon, so it's fair yes. to call him on it. It's just unfortunate that this is a is a time where there wasn't necessarily an obvious yeah. other choice. Um, but it's such a pattern for him that it's like I'm I know take it out on you because you do deserve it at the end of the day. I know this. I, it's just I wish they had used this whole thing somewhere else because overall I do agree with you know the sentiment that yeah. I feel like most of the fandom has that Bonnie gets the short end of the stick exactly. all the time. But this one, it's like this was an impossible situation, and it's and for I'm, Abby, and it's for Abby who run, ran off again. Like I'm, I know, I'm over this. Like I personally, I know. I'm just like I don't which care. is maybe where the writers were coming from and thinking that. Um, it, I don't know, you know, that it's not so bad on Bonnie's side because of all of those factors, but I don't know. It is a bit impossible. Yeah, I don't know. Which Klaus jumps in to stop them and is like, let's cut the dramatics <laughs> and begin, shall we? So Bonnie pours the blood onto the map. She starts chanting. She's doing the spell. The blood forms a circle, and it just doesn't move. It doesn't, like, mm-hmm. pull as we usually see it do. And Bonnie announces that Esther is fighting her, and Klaus claims that Esther couldn't possibly have this much power unless she's channeling something. And Bonnie, Bonnie speculates, like, a hot spot. And Klaus thinks for a minute, and you see it clearly click in, and he realizes, mm-hmm. and he just says, get the humans ready. <laughs> <laughs> I know where she is. I loved that. Get the humans ready. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Send the hounds. <laughs> Like, send them, yeah, send them out. Yeah. Yeah, if they die, they die. I mean, he's talking about sending out Jeremy and Matt. He <laughs> does not care. He's he might like, as whatever. well have said, get the dogs ready. <laughs> yeah. Damon would have been like, I know exactly what you I mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, while the while they go get the dogs ready <laughs> in the gym, we see that, you know, no one else, everyone else has left the dance. It's somehow over. And except Caroline, Tyler, and Stefan are there. And Stefan relays this new information that they're at the old cemetery and Jeremy and Matt are headed there right now. Caroline is, of course, outraged. She's like, you let them go. Like, they're going to get themselves killed, obviously. And Stefan just says, you know, I didn't have a choice, Caroline. We're useless right now. We're stuck in here. Like, what else were they going to do? And Caroline tries to tell him, I think, you know, realizing why Stefan cared so much. Like, Elena will be fine. She always manages to find her way through this stuff. And Stefan is like, yeah, I mean, I'm worried about Elena, but I'm also just as worried about what Esther is up to. She led Klaus here for a reason. If she succeeds in whatever she's doing, and Tyler finishes his sentence by saying, Klaus could get killed and I could die along with him. Stefan is like, no, no one is going to die. Bonnie's still looking for a way around the boundary spell. Like, it's not too late. It's going to be fine. 
And Stefan then leaves at this point, and Caroline is... Wait, I just got to say on Stefan's delivery here, it's so funny to me, because when he's talking to Caroline, it's like, they're very close together, kind of like yeah, whispering. Yeah. It's very like, oh, everything will be fine. And then as soon as Tyler was like, in, he's like, no one's going to die, yeah, Tyler. Stop. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Like, you're yeah, not in like, this. Yeah. It's just so funny how he's like, you know, <laughs> Stefan and Caroline have a real bond, and yeah, they're friends, they can, yeah. and they're very, like, sweet to each other, <laughs> and they're very comforting to each other. And then Tyler butts in, and he's just like stop it's fine it's i don't want to talk about it anymore yeah. and he storms off yeah, he immediately leaves he has he wants nothing to do with tyler yeah stefan agrees tyler sucks yeah we all agree <laughs> except his line earlier but yeah. other than that um so stefan's gone so it's just caroline and tyler and caroline says to tyler you know best case scenario bonnie gets us out of here klaus goes to timbuktu and you and i are home free and tyler just says or we let esther come and kill klaus but Caroline is like, that is not a best case scenario. That's not even a remotely acceptable scenario. And Tyler just says, it would be an option if we knew he wasn't the one who turned your guys' bloodline. You'd be safe. At least he would be gone. And Caroline is, of course, outraged. She's like, how could you say that? And Tyler just says, because I'm angry, because I hate him, because I never should have let him dance with you. Tyler is willing to die because Klaus and Caroline had a dance. Like, okay. Yeah. Bigger and, issues, buddy. <laughs> yeah, bigger issues. But Caroline is like, what were we supposed to do? He can't know that you're not sired anymore. It doesn't matter how many times I dance with him. I love you. And then they kiss and they have their moment. And I yeah. guess it's fine. They're crazy for yelling this out. I know. Klaus is down the hall. You can probably hear him. He probably can. He probably can. He's probably like, this is working. At least that's the one <laughs> highlight of this night. Yeah. It's like getting info. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Of course, back to the cemetery, things are getting very serious, mm -hmm. obviously. Alaric is lying on the floor of the Salvatore tomb. Obviously, we just saw him die. Yep. And Elena pulls the white oak stake out of him. And Esther tells her that he'll wake soon and that when he does, he may for a time be his old self. And if he is, then she can say her goodbyes to him before he transitions completely. Oh, she's so Thanks, nice. Esther. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so helpful. Elena's obviously upset. She's crying yeah. now. And she says, you said you wanted to undo the evil you created, but this, this is just as evil. Mm -hmm. And Esther tells her, Alaric will never be what my children became. I have granted him enough power to complete his task. Then when the time is right, he will die. And Elena is like, how if he's immortal esther ever the mystery only mm -hmm. says all you need to know is that when this is over we will have rid the earth of vampires once and for all ominous we don't know how to kill him mm -hmm. obviously in this episode elena's outraged and says yeah but you'll be killing the good along with the bad you're no better than klaus and esther asks am i i desire a world where you and your loved ones will not suffer at the hands of vampires like your aunt jenna did so many Aunt Jenna mentions Get her this name out of your yeah. mouth. Justice for Jenna. Yeah. We did not deserve mm -hmm. this disrespect a whole season mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> know. Which Elena lashes out at her for it, too. She says, don't you dare use Jenna mm -hmm. as an excuse for what you've done. And Esther tells her, you may draw comfort in knowing that your aunt is not in the place that I was. She doesn't know the torment of the other side. Though made a vampire, she remains pure. She knows peace, which is all that any of us can hope for. So interesting we get this early confirmation that Jenna went straight to peace rather than to the other side. Before we've even gotten into that whole plot. They must have known the other side was going to be a plot. Um, Probably. Like, is it next season, the season after? Yeah. So, it's interesting. Yeah, I guess they must have, but... Had an idea, at least. Yeah, I don't know. I still feel like it's a cop-out. Either way, I'm like... Ugh. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, they knew... They didn't bring her back in Ghost World, and they probably were, like, you know, yeah. not having her, anything to do with her w with the other side plot yeah. in 4. Well, I feel like they probably didn't know they were going to go so far into the ghost stuff and be bringing That's so true. many people back yeah. that they boxed themselves in in this way. Because I can't imagine they would have otherwise. Because yeah. Sarah Canning is so good friends. Like, she goes to all the cons. Yeah, yeah. They all yeah. are so close to her. You'd think they'd want to leave the door open for her to come back, but... I guess not. Yeah. They maybe thought it wasn't possible. But I also think Jenna's story ended in like a good place. I not a good place, but like what else I can you do there? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, Esther finally hears a noise outside of the crypt and goes out to, to like inspect it. And of course, Matt and Jeremy are there pointing their rifles and crossbows at Esther. Matt yells out, "Don't move." And Jeremy's like, "Where's Elena?" 
And Elena does come outside too, and she sees Jeremy and like yells his name. And he tells Esther to let Elena go. And Esther, of course, rises to the challenge as usual. She says, How foolish of you to risk yeah. your lives in defense of those who will kill you. But if that is your choice, and of course she uses her powers, it makes Jeremy and Matt turn their hands so that they're pointing their weapons at each other. <laughs> Jeremy's like, Matt, Matt, drop the gun. <laughs> Matt's like, I'm not controlling it. And Elena's just yelling, Esther, stop it. Before they can attack each other, though, like it's getting dangerously, they're aiming yeah. at each other. Alaric wakes up and comes out of the tomb and he stabs Esther from behind and she falls to the ground, dead, presumably. Mm-hmm. It is clear that Alaric is himself again, obviously. Yeah, he attacked yeah. her. And he sees, he's like kind of looking around at all of them. Everyone's like, <laughs> that was a lot for like two seconds yeah and um alaric spots elena's hand and kind of grabs it because she's like cuz i'm sure his mm-hmm. first thought is like did i do this yeah <laughs> I probably woke up blacked out somewhere and yeah like, elena's bleeding <laughs> probably was him yeah um so he like sees that but then at the same time he like notices that he himself has a huge wound obviously he literally was stabbed in the chest a second ago and died and then he also and so he's like oh my god and then he clocks he's not wearing his ring and he asks where's my ring and he, I think, is kind of quickly putting two and two together. He's not wearing a ring. He has a crazy chest wound. Something's clearly Something going, is down. going down. And he just turns to Elena and says, tell me what happened. Ooh. Not good. Not good. Not a situation you want to wake up in. No. But also, I can't believe the first kill with the white oak steak was Esther. Was Esther. I know. <laughs> that should be a <laughs> trivia question. That is, like, a brilliant, like, fun fact. No, that's really a good one. I would have never guessed that. No. Well, actually, I guess it was Alaric. Doesn't That's Esther true. stab him with the white That's oak steak? That's true. I guess she did. So Alaric oh, is the first one question. and Esther's the second. Yeah. Esther's the first supernatural, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, other. that's true. Um, Just weird. Not the just way you wild. think that would go Not down. how you think that goes down. No. But yeah. Also, this whole scene generally, Esther is so crazy for Obviously, they were coming to save Elena. It had nothing yeah, to what? do with the vampires. I thought that too. I was like... Well, I guess by extension, her comment about those but who would kill you. But still, she was, they were there for Elena. I know. It's not like, I don't know. And she was like, die. <laughs> and she's crazy. Yeah. She's crazy. No, she That's, was like, let's make these two teenagers. Thing. Yeah. She's like, I want to rid the world of evil. Let's make these Let two teenagers them. kill each other. Like, yeah. I know. She's such a hypocrite. She is. A, oh, she is. She says the worst. But anyway, got to check back in with the, the Klaus stuck at the high school situation. Outside the the gym like at that entrance klaus and stefan are standing there and klaus is like you know this is your fault you set us on this path when you released my mother i wonder if revenge will prove worth the cost and stefan tells klaus i'm done with revenge as far as esther's concerned we've stopped her before we'll stop her again oh stefan and klaus says to stefan you know, we're strange bedfellows, you and I. He loves his innuendos and stuff. Oh, yeah. And also, he can't help himself from yeah. like, being like, anyway, about us. Yeah. Um, what are we? <laughs> yeah, what are we? He's And he goes on to say, all of this, the, you know, obviously the dance, reminds him of their time together in the 20s. And Stefan is like, you say that like I'm supposed to have happy memories about it, which he doesn't even have any memories about it, yeah. but okay. And Klaus tells him, well, there were moments, real friendship, brotherhood. And of course, ruining a third moment, Damon walks out and is like, <laughs> he already has a brother. <laughs> you know, yeah. not to be territorial or anything. And Klaus is like, oh, of course, the Salvators and their unshakable bond. I wonder what will happen when Elena finally makes her choice. Will we see you shake just a little bit? I love Klaus. Yeah, he's so fun. He's just so between us girls. Yeah, <laughs> just, just I, between that's what I was thinking about. I, was like, I think more than anything, he just wants to know who she'll choose. Yes. And he's like, I need to know. He loves the drama. He loves the drama. Me too. Um, but before, you know, they can really go into that. Bonnie comes out of the school and tells them it's done. Esther isn't fighting her anymore. The boundary spell is broken. And Klaus kind of does a little test of the boundary spell and then just immediately whooshes off yeah. as soon as he Yeah, realizes. I love the waving of the arm yeah, the to just kind of see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, he whooshes away. And then Stefan says to Bonnie, thank you for everything. And Bonnie just says, I didn't do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Still not over all of this, clearly. Yeah. 
I like the thank you the thank you to Bonnie from Stefan. I know. It felt like old Stefan again. It did. They're, I know. They're really trying to fix him as fast and as much as they can. No, they are. Um, for the finale. It was also a good contrast with Klaus just like immediately whooshing off and like yes. not even acknowledging exactly. at all. Yeah. And then there is Stefan who's like, thank you. and Yeah, yeah. She yeah. did her best. Yeah. But now, back to the cemetery. Folks. I'm not ready. It's time for the Buckle scene up. we've been waiting for. Get your tissues ready. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> if God. If you're at work. I don't yeah, know. Turn it off. Pause. <laughs> Listen on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Because um, it's time. Inside the Salvatore tomb, Elena, Alaric, and Jeremy are talking. The tone of your voice. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing all the emotion for this recap. Jeremy tells them that Damon's here and that Klaus has just come and took Esther's body. And Alaric mm-hmm. asks, like, does Klaus... Clark... Clark... Klaus... <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Tongue tied. Does Klaus know about the stake? <laughs> and Jeremy says, like, no, like... You know, she only knows that, mm-hmm. you know, Esther tried to turn Alaric into a weapon but failed. Mm-hmm. At that, Alina and Alaric exchange a little look. And Jeremy catches it and is like, what's going on? And Alaric tells him, listen, Jeremy, I'm not going to complete the transition. My dark side was dangerous enough as a human. I, I can't be a vampire. Jeremy is obviously outraged, as we've, as we've, like, addressed throughout this episode. He cannot deal with the idea of losing Alaric. Yeah. And so he asks, like, well, what are we going to do? Like, lock you in here and just let you die? Mm. And Alaric doesn't answer. And Jeremy does get it that that's exactly that's what they exactly intend to do. Doing. And so he immediately starts protesting. No, no, we can't. Alara consoles him, and he says, listen, Jeremy, it's the right thing to do, okay? After everything that's happened, after all that I've done, maybe I had it coming. And Jeremy turns around to walk away. He's just angry. He's just going to storm out in anger for this, like, last moment. But Elena stops him, saying, wait, Jeremy. And she turns to Alara, because Jeremy also turns, and Elena says, Alara, this isn't your fault. And so they're facing Alara, And the piano music starts lightly coming in for Be Still by the Fray. And as soon as I hear that piano, I'm crying. I was immediately like, Mm -hmm. I can't do this right now. No. And it comes in as Alaric is speaking. He says, please, you guys, let's not make this any harder than it already is. You two should go. Damon's here. He'll make sure it all goes down in the right way. And Jeremy just starts, like, walking away. And Alaric tries to stop him, saying, hey, hey. And Jeremy tells him, don't. Don't give me some crap speech about how I need to be the man of the house. And Jeremy is really selling this whole situation. I was seeing that. I was like, actually, Stephen was acting his ass off in this scene. He really was. He was the one that had me sobbing. The way he was just like... Such a broken child losing yes. another, like, father. Another, like... Yeah, he's just really Just when you thought you had him. no one even left to lose because you've lost everyone else. Yeah, it, it's so heartbreaking. Don't give yeah. me the crap about being the man of the house. Mm-hmm. And Alaric tells him, okay, I won't. And Alaric and Jeremy hug, and then Jeremy obviously can't deal with it anymore, so he just walks away. And Alaric turns towards Elena, and there are tears in her eyes. Like, she's fully, obviously, accepted what's going on here. And she just says... This is all my fault. You moved out. You gave me your ring back. You didn't want any part of this. And I, I forced you to stay and to take care of us. And Alaric tells her, don't do that, okay? Taking care of you and Jeremy, it's been, and he takes a huge inhale, like a huge breath. He can barely get through it. And he says, it's been the closest I've ever come to the life that I always wanted. (laughs) We're both tearing up now. I'm glassy. Let me just look into the light. (laughs) Yeah. And so Elena hugs Alaric and just starts crying and he tells her, you should go. And she nods and gives like a heavy exhale, just kind of accepting the the sister goodbye. But nobody's saying it. (laughs) Yeah. And Elena walks out of the tomb and Alaric follows behind her and they stop in the entranceway as they see there's this huge gathering of everyone outside the tomb. There are lit candles scattered around and Alaric smiles a little bit, seeing all of these people. And the camera pans through each one of them individually as Elena goes yeah. to join them. And you see Stefan and then Damon and Caroline and Tyler and Matt and Bonnie and Jeremy. And last, you see Meredith, who's just standing close by crying. Even Meredith showed up for him in his last moment. It's I like love a goodbye. That they had Meredith come. It's such... The whole gathering, the fact that everybody came is such 
like a sign of respect and love and nobody says goodbye or makes a big deal out of it but they're all just kind of standing there at watch just sort of like we are here we're here and acknowledging it and kind of giving him this moment and all he can do is like he kind of he His looks face. overcome he looks so emotional but he's trying to resist it so hard and he just gives like this little like teary-eyed like nod yeah like like a smirk yeah he, i like, lost it yeah he's trying to hold it together and he just like turns and goes back into the tomb and you like hear the gates close behind him it's so it's so hard to convey the emotions of this scene i know but it's devastating just remembering it like i I love Alaric so much. I've said this in so many episodes. Like, Alaric is really a character, I think, that I just feel so much for. I really love him. I love how much of a dad he is. Yeah. I love how they all came to support him in this. And this episode, watching it, I always cry I know. so hard at this. Like, as soon as this, like I said, as soon as Be Still by the Phrase starts, I know. I'm out. <laughs> I'm yeah done. it was really the hug with jeremy this time that got oh me God. that's jeremy when i started it. yeah jeremy's i mean matt davis also does sell it like really yes. hard but yeah jeremy s- sells it i don't know just I something about that like he specifically is in such a unique elena too but jeremy being the youngest is yeah. in such a hard position of this of anybody and it's kind of like you know they kind of touch on this a little bit later elena is like i have in the scene with Stefan where she's like, I have no one. And Stefan says, you know, you have me. Yeah. Jeremy does not have anyone. <laughs> he He's left with school. Bonnie. He doesn't even have friends. Yeah, Cole wasn't even his real friend. Yeah. Like, come on. Jeremy really has no He really has no... I mean, he has Elena, but... That's it. Yeah. Elena at least does have this whole circle of people, but... Yeah. Which Jeremy has by extension, but I don't know. It's, it's not different. the same. It's not it's the same. It's so different. Also, I have to say on a less emotional note, um, why? There's this statue in the middle. <laughs> it's... The statue, if you have an eye for art, is a replica of Winged Victory, the goddess Nike. Oh. It's like one of the most famous sculptures ever. It's in the Louvre. I was like, why do they have this? I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even think anything about it. That's so funny. Yeah, I immediately caught it. I was like, I know that's like a non-issue for most people, but of course, like anyone with an art brain, you're like, that's, that's one of the most random. It's like, yeah. it's oh one of those God. famous statues in the world. Like, imagine if it was like the statue of David or something. It's just like, huh? Okay. The statue of Liberty is just out there. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, they just have a replica of Wind that's Victory, so weird. Which I was trying to think if there was some, uh, you know reason like, yeah, yeah like it's winged victory victory is the name of the statue it is you know the goddess of victory so i was like maybe there's something there but i couldn't really think of a reason so if anybody has a theory as to why they'd put yeah what? a statue of victory in this scene because this is very much not a victory it's very much no. a loss so yeah. i have to imagine they just didn't know what it was it was just a Eh, it'll work yeah it was just a statue prop they had and they just picked the prettiest one yeah and they didn't know like this artistic significance of it but i was like that's so funny it just took me out of it for a second yeah i had to pause i was like is that yeah yeah that is yeah interesting that's a weird choice i'm gonna have to like look up more about nike yeah all that stuff yeah it's like the uh, the reason i know it too is because i think it's on the um olympians medals so oh yeah that would make sense yeah. yeah so Fun fact for everyone, <laughs> if you didn't know. That is weird. I'll have to look more into that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that, that I can see how that would really take you out of it. <laughs> but anyway, obviously, we saw the one person not there, big, big person in this episode, Klaus. He has run off. He took Esther's body, as we know, and he's now in that room in his house with the five coffins. And the one is closed, and he pulls the dagger out of Rebecca and puts it on the table. I love that he undaggers her. I know. I kind of was questioning if he would. I know. I I guess I know she's in the finale, obviously. But yeah, I couldn't remember if he did. But I thought it was sweet that just like immediately, no questions. And then he goes over to where Esther's body is in the coffin and says, you know, he's like talking to her. Your trap failed, mother. I live and I will go on living. Let your beloved spirits try to preserve you again. I dare... He's popping off. I dare you to come after me. I'll build an army so big you'll never touch me. Blah, blah, blah. You'll never destroy me. He's just like ranting yeah. at yeah, so there's dead body of a madman. Truly, really. yeah, her dead body. He's yeah, yelling at. he's he's really lost it. Joseph's so good though. It's such a he good... is so good. Yeah, it never reads as like okay, he's being crazy. I'm like, yeah, no, it works. Yeah, it, works. it does work. Um, and then we see Bonnie and Jamie going home. They go inside Bonnie's house, and she thanks him for the ride home. And Jamie says, "There's no problem, of course." And then he says, "You know, there's nothing you could have done, right?" And Bonnie says, I know, but it doesn't make it any easier. And then Jamie just says, 
I should have said this before, but thank you for protecting me. And Bonnie's like, apparently it's what I do. She is obviously not in a good headspace. As like, she kind of shrugs. Like, she looks yeah, very, like, like, unaccepting of the whole thing. Yeah. And Jamie tries to tell her, you know, she's pretty amazing. To which Bonnie is just like, sometimes I would just settle for being ordinary. And Jamie says, you said your dad is out of town, right? And Bonnie just nods. And again, she she's giving out of it. And Jamie asks her if she's going to be okay, like, alone in her house tonight. And she just says, no, I don't think I am. Yeah. And he hugs her and obviously is probably going to stay over because yeah. it's just horrible. Yeah, she needs someone, really. Yeah. I think he needs someone, too. You know, he Abby too. abandoned him. Yeah. He's alone. Um, they're in the same place in a, in a way. Yeah, definitely. Um, people which, who also need each yeah, other. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking of people who also have no family. <laughs> which could um, be anyone on the show. <laughs> that's actually true, except for like, Caroline at this point. Yeah. At the grill. Uh, the lights are off. We're seeing a closed grill. Matt turns on the display light for the bar wall. I love this look, first of all. Never seen, like, this yeah. kind of rare look at the grill at night mm-hmm. um, with the blue wall. And he goes behind the bar, and he grabs a bottle and pours two shots because Jeremy's with him. And Jeremy sits down at the bar, and Matt holds up his shot glass. And Matt says, Mr. Saltzman. And Jeremy says, a lark. And they clink their glasses and drink. And you just see Jeremy, like, kind of just looks off in the distance, and you get a close-up of his face as a single tear slowly goes down it's his face. And he just, brilliant. like, wipes it away. It is brilliant. This is what I was saying. He was carrying this episode. No, he was. And then even after he wipes it away, it keeps rolling. He's miserable. I was He's like, devastated. I mean, he is, but I was like, he killed it. He yeah. killed it in this episode. He really killed it. And that, again, I've said already, I've been sobbing a thousand times. But that moment again, I like restarted sobbing. I was yeah. like heaving. Yeah. Like, Stephen is just, it's really crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's clearly so devastated, but also devastated is, of course, Elena. At the yeah. school, Elena is like, I would say more agitated and angry at this point. Yeah. She's hiding the devastation for sure. Yes. It's the classic, like, you know, if you've ever lost somebody, you go into the, I'm going to stay busy, I'm going to stay angry yes. mode, so I yeah. don't have to feel sad. And Elena's lost enough people to know that that's, like, a solid strategy. She's like, this can work for a day or two at least. <laughs> yeah, I can ride this for yeah. a little bit. Um, but, yeah, so she's trying to emotionally avoid what's going on with the lark by going to his classroom and collecting his vampire hunter gear. Um, you know, she's pulling things out of the closet into a big bag on the desk. And Stefan comes into the room and tells her, like, we can handle this later, you know. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't stop. She's still, like, hauling stuff back and forth and saying, no, I'd rather get it done and over with now before some janitor comes to clean out a lark's stuff and realizes that the history teacher was a vampire slayer. And he keeps pushing her, saying her name and saying, like, hey, Elena, like, please. And she won't give in. She's still going on. I can't, Stefan, okay? I can't think about the fact that Jeremy and I don't have anyone to take care of us anymore or that we've lost another friend. I just, I can't think about any of it. And he tells her, I want you to come with me. He's, like, really trying to, he's being this very beautiful, slow, quiet presence, which is what she's very calm. Because she's yeah. the exact opposite. Yes. Because he says, I want you to come with me. And she just, like, lashes out being, like, I'm not done. I can't, I have to keep doing this. Mm-hmm. But he softly says, like, he calms her down. He says, hey, please. Then he takes her hand, and we see them go into the gym, which is now, you know, empty. Nobody's there. And there's, they go to the middle, and Stefan tells her, we were in this gym the night that Klaus compelled me to turn my feelings off. I thought I hit rock bottom in the 20s, but after I bit you, I never wanted to feel anything again. But someone kept telling me that it was okay to feel, no matter how much it hurt, that our emotions are what make us human, good or bad, and to never lose hope. And Elena is upset but she she kind of laughs you know it's a light moment where she says who gave you that horrible advice and he says just some girl i used to date again the bit from earlier Mm -hmm. that they do it's really cute but now her facade really starts to crumble you know it's the classic like now that you've sort of let a good emotion in all the bad just comes tumbling out yeah and she says i don't have anyone anymore and stefan tells her you have me and they hug, and Elena just starts sobbing in Stefan's arms. Yeah. This is still Elena at their best. It, 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 Definitely. You know, like we've already said, they're trying to bring them back to that best before they get to the worst, and this is really them at their best. And it is crazy how back on track they've got them after everything that happened, and he references it in this, you know, scene. Yeah. Um, 
I don't no, know. they've come a long it, way. They've come a long way. It's really crazy. I feel like I have more to say about the speech that he gives, but um, I know our voicemail caller is going to mention it, so oh, I'll save okay, it. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good. I was going to say, I was like, never lose hope. This doesn't fit at all. <laughs> but we'll hear what the voicemail yeah, says Yeah, we'll hear about that. Um, and we'll comment on that. But anyway, <laughs> back at the cemetery, got to check back in there. Damon is sitting outside the crypt with the white oak steak and a bottle of whiskey, of course, probably bourbon. And <laughs> Meredith walks up to him and tells him that she gave a lark a sedative so he'll, you know, go comfortably. And Damon tells her that he offered to snap a lark's neck to put him out of his misery, but he didn't take him up on it. And Meredith is like, you seem surprised. And Damon is like, well, you think a guy who's so used to dying wouldn't want to just drag this one out? And Meredith says, she just kind of says, you know, it was nice of you to give him the option. It's so funny the way she <laughs> says it, too. Yeah. It's like, very nice, Damon. Yeah. Good. You're trying. She's, You're trying. She's pulling on that nurse bedside manner. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Damon remarks, you know, apparently my choices have been a little controversial lately. And Meredith just says... You should not leave him alone in there. And Damon tries to tell Meredith, like, that's what Alaric wants. And Meredith is like, is that really what you think that he wants? Like, to die alone? Like, come on. Yeah. And she walks away, and Damon goes inside the tomb and sits next to Alaric on the floor. And Alaric is like, you know, he's like leaning back. He has his eyes closed. He's like, is this the part where you give me a dream? (laughs) (laughs) Rainbows and rolling green hills little the comedic relief we all needed and damon is like i was drunk when i told you that (laughs) and lark laughs and is like yeah and i told you i'd use it against you (laughs) and damon just they kind of laugh about it and damon says sorry i killed you twice (laughs) and they laugh again i love that you're getting like this real like friendship moment i know their last it's very cementing of their friendship past and current because the reference is about how damon told him this damon didn't even tell elena about yeah that dream for rose yeah and he still told a lark yeah it's really beautiful and it's funny how as you know we're talking about this we're laughing so much because the lines are so funny but man is this emotional like when you it watch is. It. you're no, like laughing through tears yes yeah exactly no it's a really touching moment i also feel like I, we've been saying like throughout the season or like the end of the season that alaric has been like kind of standoffish to damon yeah they had a lot of tension yeah but yeah i feel like this is a really good recovery from that a hundred percent and the end of the though. day yeah best friends yes and Damon apologizes for killing him twice. And Alaric's like, so I have to actually die to get a real apology out of you. And this kind of brings them back and it's getting a little bit more serious. And Damon offers Alaric, you know, the bottle of alcohol. And Alaric is like, actually, I've been thinking about cutting back. (laughs) Still trying to get back to that, like, lighter moment. Yeah. But it's too late. The tears are rolling. Yeah. The single tear rolling down his face as he says that. I was like... (laughs) I know, I no. was like, oh, Lark, no. And Damon is like, yeah, this stuff will kill you. And then Damon takes a swig, and Alaric stays crying. Like He's just sobbing through this, and he takes the bottle and takes a drink from it. This scene's so devastating. It's so devastating. It has a lot of, gr- like, I love the dialogue. It's kind of light, but it's like, yeah, it's yeah. like the laughing through tears. It's, yeah. I don't know. It's really well done. It is perfectly well done. The humor with the just such such emotion. Yeah. Um, it's so moving. It is. I really love Alaric. <laughs> I love Alaric. They. Uh, no notes on this whole yeah. episode, really. No, because this is the last we get of Alaric in a real sense for yeah, a long time. For a long time. Yeah. Couple real seasons. Alaric. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> How do you come back the big from that? drama of the episode. Yeah. Um, moving away from the emotional into into the. Uh, just bad as bad. usual. Yeah. Um, at Bonnie's house, Bonnie and Jamie are lying on top of her bed. They're asleep. And we see Bonnie wake up and she rises from her bed when she like spots something and she turns and it's Esther standing by her bed. Of course. And Esther, of course, Esther says, your sisters need you to finish what I started, Bonnie. And then suddenly Bonnie wakes up. She's woken up by Jamie, who's telling her that she's having a nightmare. So obviously that, you know, vision of Esther was, was a dream. A dream. And Bonnie kind of, you know, we see her try to go back to sleep and it cuts away to the cemetery where Damon is sitting next to Alaric, who is unconscious and breathing very heavily. Like Mm -hmm. it is clearly his last breaths being taken. And it does look like he's like stopping his breathing altogether. So Damon drinks the last of the bottle and he puts it down next to them. 
and he gets up and exits the tomb like obviously like Damon's been through so much can't be there for like he can't, the last yeah, breath necessarily yeah. it was a lot to already have been there in the first place and now this so he's standing outside and he sees Bonnie she's barefoot the full moon's out it's very eerie she's just yeah. stumbling forward with like a blank stare and Damon asks her what she's doing but she like like she doesn't even see him just like walks past him is just like moving forward mm-hmm. and he follows her and continues asking like hey bonnie like what are you sleepwalking or something bonnie like he's trying to get her attention mm-hmm. and she finally turns around towards him and she lifts her hand in the air towards damon and he of course gets like the aneurysm headache mm-hmm. he clutches his head and falls to the ground in pain and presumably just like knocks out then we see Bonnie continue on into the tomb. She finds Alaric's body. And then she stabs one of her palms with the white oak stake. And she puts her palm to Alaric's mouth. And of course, he starts drinking. It's inevitable. He wakes up. He gets the vampire fangs. And he grabs Bonnie and pulls her close to him, biting her neck and like fully drinking from yeah. her at this point. And then he throws her body to the floor and he gets up and picks up the stake. And he's just left there menacingly standing. Vampire Dark Lark in his full official glory. Yep. He's an original. He's an original vampire now with the indestructible White Oak stake. Yep. And the episode ends. Yep. What a setup. What a setup. What a whiplash of emotion. (laughs) Yeah, that is wild. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even know how you come back from that. It's just insane of an ending. No. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I have nothing to say, honestly. Yeah, no other comments. We'll have a lot to say about Dark Lark in the next episode. Yeah, for sure. Um, for this one, I guess we'll throw it to our voicemail caller. Yeah. Hi, ladies. This is Renee. I'm calling with my comments about season three, episode 20, Do Not Go Gentle. First of all, in the first scene with Rebecca and Klaus, you can see a little triangle on Klaus's back through his shirt. I think that's the actor's tattoo, so just caught that. Esther... I don't understand why she picks a lark of all people to kill the originals. I really think she should have partnered up with the hunters and like as they're better hunters than a lark. And also she could try to cure her children so she doesn't have to kill them, like give them the cure. And if she does kill her children, isn't Silas and Amara still around so they're still immortals? I feel like there's some holes here. Anyway, I thought another idea would, what would be cool is I know we talk about outfits a lot in the episode. So it would be cool if that was a recurring segment, like favorite outfit of the episode just an idea and then the group says they can't compel a lark to not be dark a lark i don't i feel like this is a whole like why don't they try this my favorite quote from the episode was klaus saying i don't have to prove anything love i am the alpha male i thought that was so good and then i really like the scene with klaus and caroline he just really sees her and he predicts there that like she's going to come find him one day which she does she comes to new orleans to find him and then like that she's not a smart small town girl and she goes out to see the world and then my last comment is i've been saying that he hit rock bottom when he bit elena is my out-of-pocket moment i mean he's like murdered whole villages and those weren't rock bottom moments for him i just he's so crazy for that anyway love the podcast thanks bye <laughs> Thank you to our voicemail host. Um, yeah, a lot of good points. I feel so like many good points. I almost have to work backwards in that I never thought about that. That Stefan was like, my low point was biting you, even though I've literally massacred, killed in a, like a migrant village of God knows how many people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and his own father too. True. Yeah, yeah. It is, that is really funny. Honestly, forcing Damon to turn. Like I can think of basically. He's had a lot endless, of lows. Yeah, endless I, lows. Yeah, I don't know if that was really the lowest. Um, but He's wild. It wasn't great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So many interesting tidbits in there. I feel like the um question of compelling. Yeah. Stephanie's, yeah. Or Stefan Alaric is interesting too. Yeah. Um, we did, yeah, we did kind of talk about that a little bit. I yeah. agree. I kind of wish they had just tried it and like maybe had they done a to thing. to do a quick test. Yeah. To, I feel like they're just writing it off verbally isn't enough. Yes, I agree. I feel like even if they, you know, even if it's not a perfect explanation, like why it doesn't work. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's still pretty easy to just try it real quick yeah and i think you're right about the plot holes too of there being a lot of these questions especially as we get into further plots like the hunters Um, okay yeah i will say i think with the hunters it's a bit different where they aren't as manipulable as alaric is like esther can kind of make alaric what she wants him to be um, that's true they do seem like his favor also they're not gonna let her turn him in them into like vampires so that's true 
I don't know. It's definitely one of those things where it's like they just hadn't decided that those things were going to exist yet, obviously. Definitely. So yeah. I, I think the other immortals I can um, still write off because of the fact that I think Esther's goal here, as she said, is really to just, just undo vampires. the evil she created. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not about undoing all of the evil in the world, just what she was the cause of. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what allows a bit of a write off there. Yeah. But. Plus, Silas and Amara aren't really. Like creating more of themselves. It's just those it's two. It's true, and they're both like in a deep. They're both sleep, yeah, like so off doing their whole. They're yeah. completely out of the loop anyway. Yeah. Um. And she did offer. Too, she did so. offer a cure to Rebecca. Like she would. I think it was just like transferring her to another body. I think that's oh. what she was gonna do. Remember, yeah. Esther was like. I didn't remember her doing it in this, but she does in originals often. Yeah. Um, Maybe I was thinking of that. I think Oops, you're thinking of spoils for originals. <laughs> um, but yeah, but she it offers is, it. It's a fair point that that's an easier sell to be like, let me transfer you to a human body. Yeah, or like give you one last human life or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. There's so many interesting like plot holes and things to this. I feel like you brought up a lot of valid points, so thank you for all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but the other great thing you brought up was outfits, which yes. this is a great outfit episode, so we're going to yeah. have a whole little outfit segment. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we have to go over everybody's dance outfits. Um, we'll start at the top with the queen. We always, always love her outfits, and we already always. mentioned Elena, of course. Yeah. Um, I love this white dress. It's so beautiful. The like, It's almost like a flower, like intricate floral like, yeah, beading. Yeah, yeah. It's really beautiful. I love the uh, necklace that she has too. It's not just like the cheap, <laughs> like we've got yeah, like our the, little yeah the, the beaded stuff, which also I think Caroline and Bonnie wear. Um, it's like a nice kind of looks vintage, mm-hmm. and um, I love the headband too. Very like twenties vibes in yeah. the way that a high schooler would do it, and it's cute. Yeah, yeah. I think the beading on her dress is really what sells it for me. It's so in- intricate and so beautiful, and yeah. I mean, Alina is definitely a winter. She looks good in a white. Like, it really <laughs> yeah. makes her pop. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, she looks amazing. I mean, I feel like this is one of her most iconic looks. Like, I a love top this 10 one a lot. easily. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah, I love this one a lot. But actually, I do think that there was one I liked better from this dance. Oh, interesting. I mean, I'll just go into it and say it. I, I thought Bonnie killed it. Like, I loved Bonnie's look. Like, I love Bonnie's hair, too. The, the hair, tight, I know. Like, pin curls. The hair really is pretty. what sells it for me. I'm and like, I love the lip color. So, yeah, and the lip color that was ended up all over Jamie's face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought, I mean, she does just wear like the cheaper pearls or whatever, yeah. but like, it's I think 20s. it's the hair and makeup that really sell it for me for Bonnie. That's what I thought too, because I like her dress, but I think overall like a black uh, gems on like a black fabric is hard to read. That's so true. I feel like I lose a lot of the detail of her dress. Yeah. She does know. have some silver detailing though, which That's I true. thought was a good now. choice. Definitely. Yeah. She looks beautiful. I do like hers. I definitely like hers better than Caroline's. Oh my God. Yeah. That's, this was the worst of the three easily. Yeah. Like Caroline had the cheesy classic, like just fringe dress that everyone kind of yeah. wears for like a 1920s um yeah look which is fine but the color too is a yeah. bright reddish pink i don't yeah. know yeah in the in the episode it reads as red but then in stills it looks pinkish which i, I really don't like that makes me like it less if it's like pink yeah i do like her hair like she did the fake bob the thing looks too good. but then she's got like a fe- a pink feathery thing yeah and in all in all, know. she wasn't a win for me. Yeah, it's her makeup kind of isn't okay. super twenties either. Yeah, like and especially after like with Dangerous Liaison, she had such a win of I that know. look that I'm like, oh, it's just a little it disappointing. It doesn't compare. Yeah. yeah. So I think the um, other two girls did it a lot better, but the guys are interesting here. Yeah, they, they are. They usually just do like a suit kind of look, but we had some different sort of looks here. Of course, with Stefan, Klaus, Jamie, um, yeah. Tyler, and Matt. There's a lot of them actually. There's a lot yeah. of guys at the stands. Yeah. Well, first, I think we can just be like, Jeremy, he didn't do anything he did special. Nothing. He did nothing. He had, like, a rounded collar, and that was Yeah, it, which, which is fine. fine. That's yeah. kind of, you know, Jeremy's vibe is to not really go all out. Yeah. And then, I guess, Stefan. Um, S- Stefan sort of tried. He tried. He had, like, the... It was really subtle, subtle, and I don't think it really read on camera, but in stills, you can tell the suit is, like, a pinstripe. Yeah. And he had a funky tie, And he tie, had, like, I a guess. fun <laughs> tie, but I feel like yeah. it just looked like... I don't know. It was ugly. I hate. Yeah. I didn't for like someone the tie. who was supposed to be alive in the twenties. Yes, he should have just been able to pull from his own closet. It yeah. didn't necessarily read that way. No. But, um, someone who's dead actually was Klaus. He looked like he grabbed oh. it straight from his archives. He, was he like, ah, probably I still got did. This from the twenties. He, lo- he. I mean, he was the best male look by like yeah, an all a long suit. shot. Oh, yeah. I would say he was maybe the best look competing with Elena for me. When you said yeah. my best look wasn't Elena, I thought you were gonna say Klaus. Because okay, that's mine. it honestly could be. It, yeah, yeah. I was talking of the girls at the time, but I <laughs> yeah. actually do think Klaus looks better than Elena. He's a contender. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love like the all white uh, 
it almost, linen? Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't, and I was going to say khaki. Like, I couldn't think of what to call yeah, it, yeah, fabric, because yeah. it just looks different. And he's got, like, the full, you know, three-piece. Mm-hmm. Like, he's got all the, the pieces of the suit, the proper look. Yeah. He looks so and, dapper. And he has, like, a light-colored shoe on, too, which really, yes, like, makes it, it a full together. look. Yeah, I really, really like his He looks look. so good. I also like Jamie's look, too. I would say Jamie yeah. and Bonnie were best-dressed couple. Yeah, for sure. they were definitely best-dressed couple. Yeah, Jamie wears, like, a little, like, vest, and he has, like, hat on yeah for part of it yeah i don't know i feel like his look i was you know i'm not the most well versed in like period accurate 20s apparel but i thought it felt more period accurate yeah than some of the other guys like tyler shows up in the gangster gear oh my god his fedora was horrible that i get it yes it's supposed to be like the gangster like yeah it looked horrible. I it and looked him and Caroline together. I was just like, oh no. Well, yeah, that's also the thing. I was like, I get that Tyler wasn't supposed to come, but he's wearing like a red tie or whatever. So I thought it was supposed to match Caroline. Yeah. But then if she's wearing pink, I don't know. Yeah, There's nothing I like, worst dressed couple for yeah. sure. Yeah. And I already made fun of Manny Blue Eyes with this little ball cap boy look. Um, yeah, he was like, this is cool. Yeah. This is so much cooler than bell yeah. bottoms. I, I okay. actually do kind of like the look in a way. I like, I like um, it, but the vest and the tie on him. It's just yeah. the hat that's funny to me. The hat is a funny choice. Especially in the context of 2010's that's, high school. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, it's the context. It's more like funny. I'm like, yeah, Matt, now it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. But Matt deciding to wear this also, I'm like, yeah. there's no way realistically he yeah. would ever put this on. But yeah, interesting collection of looks we got here. Yeah. Um, I will say though, it's one of my favorite like all in like dance kind of like looks. Yes, um, definitely. Because I feel like we've had a lot of other dances where it's just the girls, but this true. dance gave like an opportunity for the guys to do something too. Which that's is nice. true. I do think that's a big plus of doing like the twenties is I do think there was there's like more male style, whereas. Yeah, I don't know, like a 70s, like unless you're doing like a bell bottom or whatever. Yeah. Like the 50s and 60s was hard. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. Overall, though. It's one of my faves. The 20s were a sleigh for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Best dressed Klaus, obviously. Yes, best dressed Klaus, maybe Elena. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Definitely two of our biggest contenders, which now we get into a lot of the other, um, well, first, not a winner situation or in memoriam. Yeah, our <laughs> only losers. I was gonna say our losers, our but losers. I was like, I feel like that's not a good Today's thing to say. Losers. <laughs> yeah, the losers of today. Um, for deaths for our in memoriam section, we have Esther, who was killed by Alaric. Yeah, stabbed in the back. Stabbed in the back. Literally she, in Metaphor Good. Key. She deserved it. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, Alaric killed by Esther when he was turned into an original. So. Yeah. A lot of just killing each other, but those were the only two. Yeah, Alaric, one of the hardest ones. That's definitely like of the yeah. whole series. Yes, yeah, series. season for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. R.I.P. In peace to Alaric. Yeah. <laughs> sad. Yeah, we miss you. Um. Now for the we'll drama. Out of pocket or things we would have done differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I really like the caller's idea of Stefan for saying that biting Elena was. I do lowest, kind of want really that funny. to win because it's so ridiculous. He's yeah. so drama. My out of pocket before that was mm-hmm. Esther almost making Matt and Jeremy kill each other just because they tried to save Elena. I know. Well, mine related to that was like, you know the saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> Matt, don't bring a gun to a supernatural fight. What? That's true. Why was he showing helpful. up with a gun? It's like, to helpful. anything. But yeah. also to this, yeah, this supernatural, like, face-off. They probably like, took it from a Lark's, like, the supplies. I guess, but, but I mean, then, like... why not make it a crossbow or something? Yeah. He didn't have time to run home to get that. I don't know. <laughs> it was just a... Like, the fact that Matt now is, like, a gunslinger, I'm like, it's too much for me. Yeah, I don't love that vibe, yeah. personally. But I still kind of like the Stefan one, actually. Yeah, we could go with Stefan. I think it's funny. I think it's a good one. <laughs> it's funny and very ridiculous. I don't think it's necessarily what he meant. I will defend the Stelena fans no, here. No, yeah, he, yeah. He definitely just meant it was like a low that he thought he wouldn't go back to or well, something. Well, also but it like was pretty low. It affected someone like you know that he, that he really loved. loved and cared about. It was the like first time he'd hurt someone he loved. Yes. Yeah. Um. So it's understandable, so I, but it's just funny. Yeah. It's yeah. It is funny. Show some respect for the dead that you killed, Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> Um, speaking of, uh, into quotes, mm. um, my favorite quote, you already know, because I've said it a thousand times, and I've referenced it in previous episodes, is, of course, Esther, the ultimate weapon. <laughs> For the ultimate hunter. I just think it's so funny. It is the funny. It is funny. So that was my favorite quote. I have another one, too. Also the caller's one, actually. Oh, okay, good. Okay, I, I have, I was going to say I have four, actually. Oh, love. Okay. Um. Yeah, rare that I usually do, like, I don't usually yeah. do a bunch of quotes, but I felt like there was a lot of good dialogue. Nice. Um. 
a definite honorable mention, but I just feel like it's very memorable for me. Like I always remember it being in this episode. Damon saying to Meredith, can they work if he doesn't take them? Like I just feel like Damon <laughs> yeah, come so on. Funny. He's Sassy. Just being silly goofy. Yeah. Um, and then I also liked I don't like the whole speech from Stefan to Elena about the Damon kiss. Like, I don't need to know when yeah. all this is over, if you and I find our way back to each other. Like that whole spiel. I really like it's I very like sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And relatedly, I also love the Klaus to Caroline speech, which we I already oh, said, yeah, so yeah. I won't the really say speech. it. But I love nominating a speech. I love a whole a speech. <laughs> I know when I'm supposed so to do funny. a quote, I'll give you the whole monologue. Yeah, that's so funny. And then I have an obvious winner for me, so I'll let you do your other one. Oh, interesting. My other one was the callers one was Caroline. Why do you always have to prove you're the alpha male? And Klaus, that's a good I don't one. have to prove anything, love. I am the alpha male. <laughs> I love that. It's so funny. <laughs> that is a good one. It's cringy in a way, but it's funny. It is a little cringe, but funny. And Klaus makes it work. Yeah. And then, but mine, my quote, I had to give it to because it's such a rare occurrence that this person gets a quote. I had to give it to. What's he going to do? Draw you another picture? <laughs> I forgot about Tyler that. ate. He ate with that. That one should be it. That's yeah. so funny. Also, when will we ever probably nominate Tyler again? No. Never. I think he gets one a season, if that. Yeah. So, Tyler, best quote. Tyler, best quote. What a shocker. <laughs> he really did eat with that, though. It's so funny. He's so wild the for that. perfect comeback. It was. Um, but from our quotes is our last category, yep. the best song of the episode. There were six songs in this episode, and I nominated all six. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. I love every single one. I mean, all of the songs were really, really good. Let me guess. You only nominated the clear winner. No, no. I did have okay, an honorable good. mention. Okay, I was good, like, good. there were a lot of really good songs. There were a lot of good songs. It's it's what happens with the dance episode, obviously. Yeah. Um, you're playing a lot of music. You're playing period music and just a lot of good ones. Yeah. Um, I'll start at the top, I guess, and just go down from there and stop me when you're on will mention pops up. <laughs> sure um uh, the first song in the episode was we are the tide by blind pilot mm-hmm. this is what they're playing during the dance setup when caroline and elena are talking about jeremy and matt and everybody it's just a very fun 2010s vibe it definitely is something you'd actually have in your like high school playlist yeah. at the time like it's just a cool getting ready for the dance you know it felt very yeah like, no I, I felt like it really me. fit the moment so yeah. i wanted to give that one a shout out that's a good um, one. Next is getting into the dance, all of our dance songs now. I love Sinead O'Connor. This was my honorable mention. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I, this one was, I think, one of my favorites of the honorable mentions was yeah. You Do Something to Me by, covered by Sinead O'Connor. Mm-hmm. Um, she did it in 1990. It plays during the Stelena dance. I love Sinead. The song was written by Cole Porter in the 20s, so it gets points for it's, era yeah. accuracy. See, I thought you weren't going to nominate it because of the whole Tiffany, I think we're alone now. Well, the difference is 20s, you can't have actual recording recordings really it doesn't yeah there's not also, enough quality you're not dancing to that a high school dance regardless. no there's not enough sound quality but yeah um but, but yes. this is a great cover of a 20s song it was so, very very good i really liked yeah it i did like it and, and it's very romantic it's very jazzy mm-hmm. i love 20s music i listen to yeah. like a lot of old jazz standards so i really appreciate this episode which probably yeah. have so many nominations um, on the opposite vibe was another song played at the dance, That Man by Carol, em- Carol Emerald, which was when Caroline and Matt were talking and Tyler shows up and he's shaking people's <laughs> hands. He's that man. He's that man. Something about like the way Tyler is like shaking people, he's dabbing people up. Like it's so funny and iconic to yeah. me. He is that man. He is that man. And yeah, the lyrics just fit that <laughs> moment in like a really, it makes it even more funny. Um, the song yeah. was from 2010. It was written in 2010. So like yeah. no accuracy point in that way but it, it does have that jazz style that the 20s is known for so i was like i still like it it worked it's it worked. so fun yeah um but another ja- uh, 20s one was the man i love covered by helen forrest which i think was recorded in 1944 mm-hmm. um which was when caroline and tyler dance and then klaus interrupts and dances with caroline um it's from a 1920s gershwin musical so points for accuracy mm, points for fun. being just lovely and so romantic i was yeah. like i need to add this to my like jazz playlist because i really liked that one um, it's just so beautiful. But that wraps up the 20s mm-hmm. songs. Um, I liked the big last emotional song. As usual, I always nominate the big last oh, emotional song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Medicine by Daughter was the actual last emotional song in this episode. Yeah. Um, you forget it because there's another one, obviously, I know, it was that like, we'll get to. Wait. Um, yeah. But there is an actual last one. This is when Jamie brings Bonnie home, when Matt and Jeremy have a drink at the girl, and when Selena have their moment in the gym. It's the classic good last mm-hmm. emotional song, and in a moment when it is very dearly deserved and earned yes. and everyone is really feeling their feels and just sobbing and yeah. i thought it was beautiful i thought it fits the moment i've had this song in my playlist for years because of this episode yeah um, no, it worked well i this song also stood out yeah it was a good ending song which is 
tough to do following yes. the other big song. Yes, getting into our winner, the actual like most emotional, impactful song of the episode. Yeah, this song has been like rattling around my head all week. Yes, it is obviously "Be Still" by The Fray. Of course. It plays, obviously, in Alaric's final moments. He's saying goodbye to everyone at the crypt. It's It just hurts. Like, the Frey had no business in 2010 <laughs> making music this sad. Yeah. I ate up every one of those songs. Like, I love oh, them God. all. Yeah. But they had no business doing this. And the song is so beautiful. It's it definitely is. It is. one of my favorite songs in the Vampire Diaries, just yeah. generally. It's so memorable. It's so heart-wrenching. Um, I yep. know, like, previously when I've made uh, videos for us where it's, like, listing all the songs in Vampire Diaries, this is definitely on the list. Oh, of, like, for sure. It's when you're definitely... only doing 20 or so songs, it's on the list. It is one of the yeah. best, most memorable, most heartfelt. Yeah, um, definitely. It's just beautiful, and I'm going to be listening to it all week after this episode. Same. So... <laughs> Same. I'll be wiping away, like, a tear at work. I'm, yeah. like, just, just like Jeremy. <laughs> just like Jeremy. Yeah. Poor baby. But, yeah, yeah. if you, like us, want to be listening to this song and all of these others um you can find we'll be adding be still by the fray to our best song of the episode playlist where we have all of the winners of best song from all of the episodes so far to this point almost all of season three and we'll also add all of those songs to our season three playlist where we have every winner and honorable mention for all of season three so that's getting stacked full we've only got a couple episodes left yeah um so check that out linked in our various bios and descriptions you'll also find there our tiktok and our instagram where we do lots of fun polls memes clips all sorts of things i'm sure we'll be doing some polls about outfits so keep like tuned in for that i guess on instagram yeah and as you already know since you're listening you can listen to the podcast on apple spotify or any like a lot of other places too yeah and if you want to see our not so period accurate but period accurate 20s costume attempts yeah yeah. attempts we tried um yeah you can watch the video version on youtube if you're not already doing that so join us this week next week any week but especially next week for <laughs> season three, episode 21, Before Sunset. Yeah. Obviously, like a little intermediary episode, but the last before yeah. the finale. A lot Second of setups, last. a lot yeah. of big time drama. Um, yeah. And then it's the finale, which I'm sure yeah. needs no introduction. So yeah. thanks for watching and or listening to this one. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.